Good evening, everyone. Call the Mary Township Board of Supervisors meeting for Thursday, February 29th to order. The time is now 701. Yep. We're back on the agenda. We pledge of allegiance, so I'd like to ask everyone to please rise. Pledge of allegiance to the of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Okay. That's always the meeting are recorded for audio and video. We ask that everyone, board of supervisors and uh, professional staff included, please silence your cell phones so we don't disturb the flow of the meeting. <laughs> for anybody interested, there are masks and sanitizers in front of the room. So the first item is to approve the minutes of the December 16th workshop meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call. Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Okay. That text is to approve the minutes from the December 21st, 2023 Board of Supervisors meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call. Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. To approve the minutes of the January 3rd, 2024 reorg meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Next is to approve the minutes of the January 20th, 2024 workshop meeting. Okay. So I don't recall on the table, so that's good. Neither are there seven. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, Irene, do you have anything for the treasurer's report? Yes, I have to apologize due to my um, oversight. A lot of items were backed up, so I lost a lot of data. I am caught up in this, but I apologize. The February financials are not available for review for everyone. So my bad. I learned my lesson. Click save every time. Um, so that's I'm late with that. Save early, save often. But, yeah. Uh, once you have them, you can put them up on the thing. Absolutely. See. I'll try to get them done this next week. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the payment of the bills for January, February, twenty twenty four. Just January. Just January. February bills. February. Eight. Okay, we don't have them out here. Oh, that's right. Okay. Oh, does that matter? Yeah. Because like we we signed, I signed checks to go out. The financials aren't available for public review. Then, then we'll promise. Okay. okay, so January only. Then I'll make a motion to approve the bills for January. I'll second it. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Mary, aye. Betsy, aye. Okay, at this time, uh, we're going to open the floor for public comments. Anybody wishing to address the board, we ask that you come up to the podium and clearly state your name and address for the record, and that you sign in on the sheet so we have that as well. <clears throat> Last. Good evening. Uh, my name is Brent Schaefer. I work for Carter Engineering. I'm here uh, tonight with uh, Mr. James Hedge, and he owns a property. In, uh, in the township, um, it's just west of Sheridan Road in between Canal Road and uh, 422. Um, and the reason we're here tonight is we there's some interest in the property, but it's not supported by the zoning. And we just want to kind of get, get some feeling and, and uh, feedback from the supervisors uh, to see if, if this is worthwhile pursuing um, if you know if there'd be a chance or, or some way we could make this happen or uh, or otherwise. So um I don't know. I brought, I brought handout copies if it would be okay to hand them out. Um, but basically it is a four and a half acre property and it's currently uh there's a small building on it that's a house. Um and uh the rest of it is used for agriculture. Anybody else? So, uh, the the interest in the property is for basically for owner occupied residences that have a commercial aspect, uh, like a home home occupied business. Um, one of them specifically would be an upholstery shop and another one is an auto shop. Uh, so 
the applicant asked us to look at uh, just you know prepping a sketch of what that might look like, and that's what's before you today. There's not a whole lot of detailed work put into this because of the zoning issue, and that is the the prime obstacle we have is that this is zoned low density residential, and there's no provisions for any kind of commercial use in that building. So the intention would be for two new residences, but the ability to have a commercial use running onto the park, uh, Conway Weiser Parkway. And uh, uh, that we did submit a sketch plan a few months ago and we got a review from your engineer. And it also raised that issue, which we are aware of. Um, but that is, I mean, there's other issues, but they're really periphery to this main issue. And, you know, in looking at it, I guess we, we came up that we thought there would be two options for us. One would be to see going and leave for the use. And secondly, uh, the other option that came up was if the township would be potentially open to amending the zoning, being that these are properties along 422 and they do have, you know, uh, prime frontage for commercial activity. Uh, so does anybody have any questions for me? Um, how close to Sheridan is it on the side? So Sheridan is about 500 feet away. Okay, okay. So so the, the edge, yeah. The edge. Right. So, so yeah, I it's right off. Like, like, just about daily, the flooding. Is, yeah. Uh, how is that work out with our flooding man? Like, our, yeah. is that anything to do with the There's a large natural drainage way that right. bisects right through the middle of this yeah. property. Yeah. Um, flowing from west to east. Um, but beyond the drainage, the concern would be that this, this property is in. <laughs> Uh, low density residential district. Mm -hmm. And as shown on the little plate map up here, yeah. you know, rezoning this could be right in the middle of that residential zoning district. Mm -hmm. um, I do understand what the applicant is saying that a portion of this site has, well, all the site has frontage on 3.2, mm -hmm. but there's great differential that prevents vehicular accident to at least one of the lots. Mm -hmm. So that means that one residential unit in a business would have to come in off of Canal Road right. for access. Which yeah. is there. So while the business may be visible, um, you're, you're going to have to come back around to get to it. Mm -hmm. You know, the other issue typically is two principal mm -hmm. uses on one property, it's not for permitting. Um, uh, in addition to a number of other zoning issues that we made, it makes it, it makes it tough to do what the applicant's proposing. But this is low density residential zoned land, so you could, and especially when sewer comes through, this could be developed to create a lot more residential units, and it's going to be right along where your sewer is going. So you know, keep that in mind versus very limited development with a commercial and residential mixed use kind of hot. And then of course, you know, the issue becomes of setting a precedent. Once you endorse this or the zoning hearing board were to favorably consider it, well, now you know others could seek in the same type of relief mm -hmm. to develop something similar. You know, and the problem becomes I think down the road while you have you know, Holster shop and an automobile shop, 10 years from now, somebody went for something different. Right. It's either more or less intensive. You don't know. Um, so, any zoning relief would have to be really specific to the use that's being proposed at this time. Just my words of warning. So, you know, I did review this sketch plan. We issued a review letter January 11th. The planning commission had a meeting, uh, but unfortunately, the applicant did not. End the meeting that nobody was there to represent this project. So the planning commission really, you know, we talked about the project, um, but there was no two-way dialogue about what the planning commission felt, and therefore you don't have any recommendation from the planning commission at this time. So, you know, it might bear some merit to get some input from the planning commission before you 
offer any ideas or, or indication of support or lack of support for any relief or rezoning. Okay. Can we get it taken before the planning commission again? Going up to the applicant, yes. Yeah. This can be yeah. I mean, like I said, we, we did submit it and we didn't get to that meeting, uh, didn't get to attend that meeting. Um, I think this was the first available meeting that we were able to make it to, so that's why we're here. But um, yeah, I mean, as long as the township you know, would be willing to put us back on that agenda, uh, we could return there. So the planning commission has a separate agenda. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So go to the planning commission. Can we go on and like submit it? Sure. Yeah. And you know, like the sketch plan doesn't, you know, yeah. this nature doesn't require any acting on behalf of the test. Yeah, we, it's a we, means to just have some feedback and, and some dialogue and what works and what doesn't work. And, uh, and I think that was their intention to come before the board here to just get an idea. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, we didn't we didn't expect you know a motion or decision mm -hmm. or anything yeah. like that. We're just looking for some general you know thoughts and feedback here to see you know get a feeling if we have to keep in mind too is the timing issue of this because you there's no public sewer in here. So you would have to create a lot of sewage septic system. Mm -hmm. And then in a certain time frame, the town is working on getting public sewer that's going to come right down Canal Road. Right? So once that sewer goes in, all the effort to put an all lot septic system in is going to go away in essence because it's going to be required to connect to the public sewer system. Right. And I, I was aware of that, too, but I don't know. Um, and maybe you don't either what the timing. The or is sometime in the next five years. Yep. And that's so it's this year. That's five generally years. all we have is yeah. within five years. Generally speaking. Yeah. It's a big undertaking for Marion Touch. Big cost. So there's a lot of funding, a lot of DEP approvals, and um, the time for construction too. Yeah. yeah. So best thing to do is take it before the planning commission. I'm I'll speak for myself on this. I'm not inherently opposed to that sort of thing. It's nice to see some small business come into the community, but there are certain zoning related concerns that we have to worry about, storm water, et cetera, which I'm sure you're you're well aware of. But first step is get it in front of the planning commission so that they can weigh in on comments along with the engineer and then we can consider this board. So we'd be on for March planning commission then. Bring it up. March. Yeah. Follow up to the, yeah, I mean, you um, make sure the commission members are all available. And, yeah, we would go with the same review. Okay. Nothing's yeah. going to change at this point. So, yeah. you know, they just didn't make the last right. meeting, so the planning commission wasn't able to have a back and forth dialogue. Okay. I will say at, at the planning commission meeting, I think you should be prepared to, to discuss why the rezoning wouldn't be a legal spot zone because it is in. As Chuck mentioned, the heart of the residential district. And I think you also consider you know, what the property owner will do to lessen the impact of the auto shop right across from at least one, two, three, four, five homes. So I think those are, are two concerns that definitely need to be addressed. What I'm hearing, I think, is the spot to live in the top. Yeah, I don't think hardship to prove, so you almost have to create right. an answer and leave from zone. Yeah. Well, remember, right. so, even, even in the context of rezoning, the township cannot rezone as spot zoning. Yeah, I don't think we'd be asking yeah. for spot yeah. zoning. We'd be just looking for, you know, some interest from the township to relook at the zoning along 422 and see if there'd be some reason to. Well, by doing what? I mean, that you have all the highway the frontage there to see if there'd be some reason to maybe go the extend the extend the highway commercial frontage down. Having been involved in the region that we just did not too long ago, but the rest of the property is the one that is in question here is very much the exception, not the rule. The rest of them are very long, very narrow, very small parcels by comparison. So you really would not be able to put any sort of commercial frontage on any of those those parcels. And all, all, all the parcels leading to this one contain single family homes. They do. So this would be it. And 
correct me if I'm wrong, but this would be a, a zoning relief sort of situation rather than a rezone. If, if that even is applicable. Well, I guess those are the options we were yeah. wondering to get feedback on what, what you know, where that township would come down. Legally, I, I don't think this is right for use variance. I think you would you would need to rezone prop prop because this is this is a, a low density right. residential residential district that doesn't allow any current uses. And then we get into the issue of spots. I think if we have one one, one red one, dot right, one the most of cherry picks yeah. in the heart of the you know, LDR district, yeah, it certainly appears on its face to be a legal spot zone. Thank you. There's something new today. Yeah. Now that's that's actually everybody's decided. Yeah. So many maps. It's why we zoned a yeah. bunch of things. Yeah. Consistently, as we had kind of a an accumulation of what appeared to be spot zoning over a couple decades of, know of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Like I said, we're not inherently opposed to it, but we need to make sure that it's it's done correctly and legally. First step, though, is get it in front of planning commission. A big comment on it. So we can comment and we can circle back around in another meeting. Thank you. Thank you. So the one thing I did hear there is like if you're looking for something, you know, how would you address the impact to those abutting and surrounding residential properties that are there today? You know, you know what, what would you propose to try and you know mitigate the impacts from a potential water shop and yeah, I guess you know, I mean I guess that. I figured that that kind of an issue would come up during the you know, plan development review. So, and, but this is a use. You're trying to put a use here that doesn't fit. So I think you really need to address or look at that, have some ideas, concepts for how to mitigate it. Yeah, sure, get yeah, typically buffering and so, so forth. Typically, yeah. In a, in a district that would allow it. Yeah, that'd be the way to go. But the, the first the first hurdle for this project is for the, the zoning and you can't consider the rezoning aspect without the impact it may have on the planet problem. Right. Yes, so I understand it takes some lifting by the township to amend zoning regulations and look for the map. That's, you know, we understand that. That's why we're here to just, you know, yeah. Well, and again, in a in a rezoning process, all the but problems can be done mm -hmm. It's tough. It doesn't fit the zoning, and that's what makes it tough. Yeah. Yeah. Understand. Thank you. Cool. Okay. I turned down the meeting at Wisdom of the Stonecrop Building on one ninety eight Three Birch Lane. And my issues are the same that I brought to the uh, committee. The as built plan for the as built copy of those and they're not available to you. Uh, I don't know that we've gotten the as built. I had asked for that. Uh, the developer had some set a request to re release the remaining financial security. There were a number of administrative items that needed to be addressed. So they withdrew the request for consideration. They are working on preparing the as built drawing. They're working on making sure all the property corners are set. They're making sure there's enough monumentation out there to mark the property right of ways uh, and a number of other things. So we have not received as built drawing at this time. I also know they withdrew their NPDS permit termination because they were unable at this time of year to. It, was, it wasn't favorable conditions for the conservation district to come out and see that that infiltration pond being infiltrated. That's a ground. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Excellent, because that, that's one. There, there also was the fire matter of fire protection that you said had been yeah. successfully completed. I, I understand the tests were done there and it, it met the standard. And again, that's documentation that, that I have asked for to make sure that that's in place. Um, I, I hate to be a, a stick in the mud, but we need those standards to going forward. We'll have to produce them for you in the very near future. Well, I, have I, I don't know that we would need to, you know, replicate the testing on the withdrawal of water for fire protection. Yeah, you I, be, I don't know when that would come up. I mean, 
you know, right now if the pond is full and the system is in and they've tested it and they can call them over to meet the standards, they're okay. I don't know that you would ever need to recertify or have that testing done in the future. It's well, I'm, I'm fairly certain that you have to certify. I mean, you have to certify any hybrid anyway. Yeah, I don't think it's yes. because this is a private system. Well, that that and uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but that's not something we don't obviously have any other pilots in the township, so that's right. That's not something that is really kind of in usually hybrids are flush on an annual basis, but they're not tested necessarily for flow. I I don't have voice or standard for it, but I do know there are standards for it. Yeah. Um, we'll come back with you if you want. With, with what those standards are. Um, and we need a survey of the properties. Pinning. Well, that would be the ASCO pin that the developer's going to provide to the town. If we need that to see that everything on the infrastructure was constructed as it was shown in the land development. Okay. Now, with what we refer to as will be gone, you're, you're talking about the drainage area. Um, did they present a plan to you for what they were going to do, or they were given that to the county? The, Lake will be gone, that's what we call it, the infiltration pond. That was a change that was approved by the Berks County, Con County Conservation District and related to their NPDES permit for the project. The township had no involvement in that whatsoever. Yeah. That NPDES yeah. permit provides stormwater management above and beyond what the township regulations are. That's meaning state regulations. Okay. You answered all my questions. Thank you. Once we have all that uh, asphalt stuff, we'll send it your way. I'm standing. Stay good. Any other public comments? Seeing none, there are uh, there were two people. There's one person on Marissa Griffith is on or Griffin, excuse me, is on the Zoom. Marissa Griffin. No. And no. uh, M A R I S A, yeah. last name G R I F F I. Okay. Uh, we did have Al on, but he's not there anymore. So if he pops back in, I'll, I'll you know. Um, but uh, I guess the first actual item on the agenda, we're going to move up the, the track. Well, if he, if he's not in the meeting right now. Okay. Why don't we be able to do that until he's back? Okay. I take that back. Then. Um, <laughs> Item number one is the Olson Design Group. Uh, we were presented with a design for a new building. Um, Lee is unfortunately having surgery. He's going to attend the March workshop meeting and discuss the, the items we want to have as small modifications to that plan. Um, we're discussing the open applications for some of the, the ARP money and some uh, multi-purpose community facility grants, as well as some other grant opportunities to fund uh, a new building. Yeah. So they put the camp in for that grant. Right. Right. We scan that in at the end, and yeah. I, that's the one that's due in April. Yes. Okay. Kimberly, that's, that's, we'll, we'll that's one that basically. we're, what we have is sufficient for that. Correct, correct, yeah. correct. And we don't have to be sure yeah. already. And, and just for public knowledge, there may be a lot of grants because the use of the building is going to be Exactly what we said, your multi purpose. And so we're going to look at the grants from FEMA, from any agency that's going to give us a grant because we need the help. Because it's going to, we're, we're, our goal is to have it as an evacuation point, an emergency operations center, as, long, as well as a community building and, of course, the township office. So that's our goal. And along with revamping, well, Susie, with rebuilding, we will be revamping the playgrounds and this property. Ideally, we will come um, storage, uh, salt shed storage, and uh, new truck storage. Yeah, this is be like the municipal depot. Yep. Right yep. More to come on that. Uh, Al is back. He's joined from his iPhone, so only went in. Good evening, Al. Are you able to hear us? Do you have an image He's, of him? And now he doesn't have his camera on or his microphone. Do you have a phone number? We should be calling. I have a cell phone number for him. Hmm. Yeah, give him a call. Well, give, give him a second. Give him a text while I'm in the office. I can see him here. He just doesn't. I can't force him to turn on his camera or, <laughs> or his microphone. It's pretty easy. 
No. I mean, I can put something in the chat, but you can probably hear us. Right. So, um, while we're doing, while we're waiting for that, Al, when you uh, when you have the ability to unmute, just uh, speak up, let us know, and then we'll kind of dog leg over to the other thing. Uh, next item on the agenda, though, is the Act 537, the special study has been submitted. Um, there is a final draft available, and it has been for, will be forwarded, excuse me, to the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection after the town hall. That is scheduled for March 14th at 7 p.m. Uh, this will be a, a, an informative session to help everybody understand the uh, lead up to where we are with the Act 537 where we are right now and how and what and how we as a board are trying to approach dealing with that particular issue. Um, won't go into too much these jokes and talk for that perhaps then, but long story short is uh, we're, we're pushing for a revision to the plan that will hopefully drive down the cost a bit and put us in a better position for grant funding and mm -hmm. the premise being you can't get grant funding, you can't do it. So, this has been posted on the website. The 30 day public comment period is open. Um, I encourage everyone to please be there uh, March 14th at 7 p.m. at the Conrad Weiser West Elementary School. And I see Al. Good evening, yeah. members of the board. Are you able to hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm a little technologically challenged here. Thank you for trying. I, first, I was on my computer, then I went to my wife's. That was the Marisa, but I appreciate you uh, giving me a few minutes to chat if I may have the floor. Um, I can. He doesn't have a video on, so you okay. have to All right. Um, I'm going to turn it up. But. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you. I'm, my name is Al DeGenero. I'm Deputy General Counsel with JP Mascara and Sons. I was hoping to speak to you at the public comment uh, sex, uh, portion of your bit about your your agenda item uh, with regard to the award of the trash. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I haven't had the pleasure of appearing before you. I've been with the company for over 33 years. I'm um, deputy general counsel on the legal department. I'm equally involved in the business aspects. And one of the things I'm involved with is our municipal bidding. Uh, I don't know what you know about JP Mascara Sons, but we're a family Owned and operated business, been around for 50, uh, 50 plus years. We own four landfills, one of which is in Berks County, the Pioneer Crossing landfill that we're very proud of. We operate three transfer stations, uh, own and operate three transfer stations, operate a couple more pursuant to contracts in New Jersey. We have three compost facilities, a yard waste facility, um, numerous hauling divisions, and we also have uh, one of our proudest the gems right now, our total recycle facility uh, right outside of uh, Birdsboro and Exeter Township, which is a uh, 600, 700 ton per day single stream material processing facility. I wanted to give you a background because uh, our bread and butter uh, in this part of the state uh, and in the area we do business is municipal waste contracts. And we were delighted to participate uh, in your township uh, bid solicitation that you recently received our bid. Now I know we're the only, only bidder but I wanted to give you a little background, which is why I sent a letter. Uh, I don't know if you folks had a chance to see the letter I sent with a couple of attachments. If I could just ask yay or nay, have you had a chance to review that letter that I sent you with some attachments? I have not. Did you guys see it? No. I saw, I saw the email. Uh, well, I, I, I sent the letter yesterday asking uh, uh, Ms. Say to circulate it to you, uh, but if you don't have it in front of you, um, basically what I'll, what I'll, uh, what I'll relay to you which is relevant is why your price is where your price is today and i'm sure that uh it was sticker shock when you saw that uh, but i can tell you that uh the state of our industry along with the pandemic has caused our industry and our company to uh incur significant costs just to give you an idea you all see what's happening the interest rates interest rates have gone up 165 percent i'm really sorry you don't have that in front of you because i thought that that would have been given to you before the meeting so that you could have a chance to look at it and understand why uh, the price is what it is. Um, but in any event, interest rates have gone up. The wages have gone up significantly over 65%. These are all costs that our company has incurred uh, since uh, bids before the pandemic versus now. The truck costs have gone up by 35%, as have the parts. Uh, fuel has gone up 
almost double for diesel fuel. The parts repair costs have gone up 50%. Insurance and safety costs have gone up 35%. The recycling processing costs have gone up about 35%. And disposal costs have gone up 20 to 25%. Attached to the letter I gave you, if you had it in front of you, I listed for you about 25 municipalities, maybe more like 30, that we participate in bid solicitations where we were awarded a bid to show you how drastically the price increases uh, in these townships and municipalities similar to yours. And I highlighted six of them because six of them were Berks County. We were the only bidder in the borough of Wyoming missing, and their costs for trash recycling yard waste went up 182%. That was a contract that started a year ago. Uh, in Shillington Borough, recycling only, the cost went up 104%. In Maiden Creek Township, the cost went up 121% for recycling only. Amity Township, uh, right down the road from one of our operations, the cost went up 134%. And then Exeter Township and Lower Heidelberg Township were on the lower end. They were both in the 70% increases. And the reason why they were a little less is because in those two municipalities, uh, carts that were previously, we were the incumbent contractor uh, and we had carts on on the job and didn't have to uh, provide new carts. Exeter Township, again, was a contract where we were the only bidder. And, and over half of these uh, public bid solicitations where we were awarded contracts, we were the only bidder. And why is that? And that, for a couple of reasons. Number one, no one, no one has the... Uh, uh, infrastructure that we have in this local region. Look, we're not a national public company. Waste management's a $15 billion company. The green trucks, Republic, the blue trucks, they're a 12 or $13 billion company. And we don't compete with them nationwide. But I can assure you in the general Berks County area, and frankly, in all of Southeastern Pennsylvania, we have the best infrastructure uh, of any of these companies. And we can, we can compete and we have more municipal contracts in this region than any other, any other company when you add them all up. We have a landfill right down the road in Exeter Township. We have a recycling center right down the road in Exeter Township. And we have a hauling division right down the road in Exeter Township. So while our costs have gone up, and you can see that it's, it's been significant, you know, frankly, there are no other bidders for a couple of reasons. These are most challenging times in our industry. It's very difficult uh, with the labor market the way it is and with costs for companies to take on new business in fact, our competitors challenge to, to do the work that they currently have. I don't know much about your current provider other than what I've read in the paper and seen, and that was that Wozniski was a private family company, uh, competed very locally in the Chester County and, and bordering county areas, got bought out by a public company, and that public company, I think, is Waste Connections. And uh, just from what I read in the paper, it's been a challenge for them and all the municipalities they've taken over. And I think they took over... Uh, Eagle at one point, as well as Brzezinski, so they may be your current service provider. You folks can still hear me, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so respectfully... Oh, yeah. We have your paperwork. We're, we're looking at the numbers. Okay. So you see, you see, you see in exhibit, exhibit A, I highlighted the six municipalities in Exeter and in, in Berks County to show you that you're not unique, that every one of these municipalities throughout uh, Eastern Pennsylvania, some in the Northeast, some in the Southeast, some in Berks, some in the Lehigh Valley, all experience similar uh, increases in cost. And when you look, when you look at the per week pickup and the per unit pickup to send a $400,000 truck with the driver that being paid approximately $85,000, uh, a CDL experience driver with two helpers, driver's helpers to help guide that truck as well as collect the trash making between forty five to $50,000 a year, plus, the, plus the, um, the cost we incur, hospitalization, um, all those associated items that I went over with you before, the insurance cost, the cost of the truck, all those things. Uh, when you look at your price per pickup, uh, uh, if, you, if you go without the container, I don't know if you have a container now or don't have a container, but you can see the difference in price outlined on your sheet as well as what I showed you, but I broke it down. Your bid price shows per quarter, but I wanted you to see not only per quarter, but per month, per week, and per pickup. So you can see every time that truck comes down and picks up a trash, 
uh, it costs, if you go with the option 1A that doesn't have containers, $5.74 to pick up that trash. And I submit to you that that's not a reasonable cost when you give consideration to all these items that I referenced for you. And the same thing with the truck going down and picking up the recyclables, again, under option 2A with no containers, it's $2.59. So when you add those two up, it's a little over $8. And I wasn't being cavalier when I mentioned in my letter, but the truth of the matter is a six-inch hoagie and Wawa these days costs $6 when you get a soda. Uh, it's it's over, it's almost $9. So I would submit to you that you've got a good responsible, responsible bid. Uh, we're ready, willing, and able, and we can start on April 1st. I think that your contract expires the end of March. So, so certainly... You have, a, you have a bid in front of you that when you look at all the other communities, you're right in line with where they are uh, in terms of the, the, what you paid before versus what you pay now uh, with the increase. And as far as the service is considered, we're the premier service provider in the region. I've been with this company 33 years. Our motto, if it's service, it's us. Uh, we don't take lightly. You don't send your check to some faraway corporate headquarters. We're right down the road in Montgomery County, and we're a good citizen, a good corporate citizen, and participate everywhere we do business. And if you check any of those communities in Burst County, as well as any other communities, I know that they would tell you that we provide them with excellent service. And we haven't had the privilege of serving Marion Township, but we certainly welcome the opportunity to do that. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have uh, uh, as it relates to looking at the two exhibits I prepared. And I know your staff prepared a summary uh, quarterly that shows the cost, but I wanted you to see uh, per week, per, per month, per week, per pickup, because I think that really, really shows you the value that you get for that equipment, that manpower, that service coming down the street twice a week, picking up your trash and recyclables. <laughs> I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, I know you're, I know you're, I'm sorry. I have, I have a question. So, is yes, sir. The update staying the same to what it is currently, which would be on Tuesday. I'm sorry, sir. Would you repeat is that? The, is the date for the trash and recycling being collected, uh, day of the week, I should say, the same under under this agreement, or would it be changed from Tuesday to some other day of the week? Uh, I got to be honest with you. Did your spec did your specs provide that it's supposed to be a specific day? We would certainly try to accommodate you. Oh, and no, make no, it the just, same day. Uh, no, it did not specify, but I was just curious because I didn't see it in the, the submission well, here. Yeah, look, if we could accommodate the, the municipality, we always try to do that. I mean, we had a municipality up in the Northeast that they wanted to, that the trash was picked up on Friday. It didn't make sense for us to pick the trash up on Friday and have it sit there the whole weekend. So we asked them, well, would they go along with the change on Monday? And they were they were happy to make that change. I don't know how you came to have Tuesday, but if that's the day, you wanted, barring some uh, unforeseen circumstance that we couldn't pick it up on Tuesday, we would do it on Tuesday. We have a fleet of trucks uh, right down the road. So I'll go out and limit and say, I'm pretty sure we can pick your trash up on its given day. Uh, unless you tell me it's Monday. There's a lot of people that have trash picked up on Monday. We might be stretched, but Tuesday, I think we can do that. Truth, <laughs> truth be told, I'm not married to having it on a Tuesday. That's, we can certainly entertain the idea of changing it. I was just curious if that was a known, uh, known object. No, I, I, honestly, Mr. Supervisor, I don't think we knew what we typically do is when we're awarded a contract, <laughs> operations people come in and meet with the chairman of the board or the manager of the township or, or the town and discuss, you know, what day do you have? What day do you want? What days do we have? What days are available? And we try to make it mutually agreeable because obviously we want to start off on the right foot. Absolutely. Okay. Um, Jesse, I read you have questions. Yeah, um, so we would receive monthly reports. Is that correct? Uh, well, absolutely. Like, yes. Okay. Yeah. We, now, we we do we, we do that with all our municipalities because obviously, if you don't apply for a Pennsylvania uh, DEP recycling performance grant, we help you do that. You certainly want to you certainly want to apply for a grant, and you we give those reports to the 90, 95 municipalities every month that we serve it. So that's standard. Thank you. We do participate with that. I mean, right now, I think we're we're looking at uh, the consolidated option 1A and 2A, um, which I think is ideal because uh, we have containers, so we won't need containers. Oh, that's great. 
And you don't care if the containers are from another company, correct? <laughs> no, no. Well, you know, I, if, your option, if you say, if you if you award the contract to us without containers, we pick it up in whatever they put it out at, and we, we pick it up. We'd rather have red containers with blue lids, but obviously that's not, if that's not the way you're going to go for the few dollars you can save. I understand that. I don't have any other questions if, you, if the board is satisfied with Mr. Junior's statement. Uh, but I do have a couple of administrative notes to make. Does the board have any other questions? No, we don't have any other questions. Thank you very much for your time, sir. And uh, we look forward to doing business with you. Thank you. So, a couple of notes. The agenda says that the contract expired, expired on March 1st. That is not correct. Our crash contract with Eagle expires on March 31st. So our trash service and recycling service with Mascaro, if we accept and remove that bid, will be done April 1st. Uh, as Mr. DeGenero said, uh, I did look at the prices of our current contract, about 60% increase. But again, you know, our last contract with Eagle was, was pre-COVID. Um, so before we take any action on this bid, uh, we'll first need a motion to ratify the request for proposal preparation by Kozlov Stout, um, as well as its advertisement on Ken Bid and Red and Eagle uh, by SDE. Didn't we already do, wasn't there any, can, did we do that in our time meeting? Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Well, this past meeting, we get authorized to that was, okay. that was, in that case, in that case, no motion is needed. Um, I, I will let the board know that I did take time to review this bid by Mascaro and it is compliant with our expert proposal. So it is it is right uh, to be approved and awarded should the board so choose to do that tonight. Okay. Is it is it a done deal? We have, we had one bid. <laughs> <laughs> Just out of curiosity, how stupid reason somebody came to me uh, for trying to get me a my bid for my business and said they were interested, would be interested in doing a bid here. I didn't know anything that there was any bids out. I said, I have no idea what the contract is. It was one of the, I think, of the owners. The goods disposal, if that's a, if it's not a done deal, well, but they are rather competitive uh, and very. Yeah, they just the county comes this way pretty strong. Yeah, there's it was just a bit of black heat. Yeah, the, the complication is we have to advertise that certain period of time for bids to come in. And we're at this point, because of going through the timing the appropriate way, goods unfortunately didn't bid in. We're down to the wire. We don't really have time to put it out to bid again before our current contract runs in. Um at, at that point, I would have loved nothing against the sheriff, love you guys, but um, it would have been good to have multiple bids in. But unfortunately, if they didn't bid when it was bidding period, then that is what it is. Um, uh, how long how long's their contract? Two years. <laughs> well, this is a, this is a three, three year contract. Three, I'm sorry, three years, and there's a two year renewal, correct? Co correct. At the township often. Yeah. Um, with the contingencies that you had put in for the bid, with all those remedies listed because of all the issues that we had previously. Right. So Mascara is aware of okay. they're, they're oh. comfortable with that. Okay. Been... Excellent. I'm happy. Yeah. So at this point, I think we we have an option. <laughs> and we we have we have the state of the world, which what it is in the sense that prices have gone up. Was that last year or two years ago that we put out the Eagle? Two, the two years ago? Um, even at that point, the prices were astronomically high. Um, it, was, it was easily double what yeah, our current years. bill was two yeah. years ago. So this this is more than any of us are used to paying, but unfortunately, that is the state of the world for trash collection. And it could have been more. And it could have been far higher. So I'm 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 okay with this. I'm pleased with this. Um, the price uh, per year. For the first year would be six hundred and forty nine dollars and thirty two cents per household, which is one hundred and sixty two dollars and thirty three cents a quarter, and it goes up a small amount each year for the 
the remaining years. Year two would be $174.18 per quarter. Year three would be $182.70 per quarter. And those are prices without containers. And those are prices without the containers since we already have the containers from. Are you sure? Yes. Is Eagle not wanting them back? Eagle does not want them back. They've okay. actually they've given us an option to purchase the totes for 10 bucks a piece. So that's going to be discussed after we move through this. But I didn't know. Huh. Andrew yeah. Casey's email said 10 bucks a piece. I didn't see any emails. That's not what he said today. It's, no. Okay. That's, that's I didn't yeah. yeah. that's that's just, It's okay. You, you know what? Yes, that's the thank you. And it wasn't when he said when he was in. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. when, well, when did he visit the township office today? Oh, this afternoon. The afternoon. After he sent that email? No. When we left, uh, we checked emails right before we leave and we did have a email. So okay. we have a toast, whether it's not that no cost of 10 bucks a piece, and this would be probably a capital expenditure from the township or something. We have to figure out if that's something that could be a charge back to property owners as part of the trash collection mm -hmm. service. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but for, for 10 bucks a tote, we're not going to get cheaper than that. Yeah. You know, just if you look at the rental prices for the tote per year, just to rent it, yeah. probably we can double that. Yeah. So, yeah. so yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven. Yes, that was in the proposal. For minimum producers and yeah. it was eight dollars a bag. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the first three years, then it went up to nine dollars and ten dollars for the two options. Does this include uh, what we're currently getting now bi weekly recycling, weekly track, and how about large items per week? That includes all items, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so it's, it's essentially the same service. Noted, but yeah, the proposal was pretty much the exact same. We got one proposal. That's unfortunate, but it's it is what it is. Um, okay, so I'm I'm comfortable with this. You guys comfortable with this? Yeah. Okay, I'll make a motion. Uh, I'll stop me if I'm wording this incorrectly to award to accept to accept an award and award the uh the proposal for trash and recycling uh, uh, under options one a under yeah, options two a one a and two a from JP Mister. Second. Okay. Options one, three, and two, and correct. Are you seconding? Yes. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Have a nice Thank night. you. Thank you. Al. Look, we'll, our operations people will be in touch. Thanks Thank again. You. Very, Thank very you. appreciate it. Have a good night. Yeah. Um, just we went back. The, the next couple of items are so uh, we're gonna we're gonna continue. Just we'll come back and resume. Uh, next item is the sewage management program. The township newsletters were mailed on Friday, February 9th. Residents should have received them already. Uh, Heidi Terra would like another look, uh, letter notifying homeowners of an educational meeting about online maintenance to be done annually. Uh, Heidi Terra is registering pumpers to start using the Terra tractor system, I believe, on as of Saturday, they were was it four or six. Guys, yesterday they're five, five. she said. Um, yeah, you know. Okay. So they, they were just had some minor verifications to do, and then it was they're good to go. Good. Good. Just as a caveat to this, so yeah. previously to um, working uh, with a prior SEO, and now in combination with SDE and Hydroterra, we're going to be able to track the properties that have gone through the inspection for our old compliance, which makes it a lot easier on us because we were trying to figure out how are we going to track the properties that are and aren't getting yeah. the inspection because we are under the gun. We have to comply with this ordinance in order for DEP to continue to not fine us yeah. and, and, uh, Let's say yeah. Um, so, so thank you. Um, and I, we spoke with Kimberly briefly and, uh, so we'll be able to, um, know which residences, Right now, as we have it set up in this this district thing type of a pattern, 
uh, but we will be able to see who is and who isn't compliant. I guess down the road, Colin, if you'll be able to help us draft a letter to those residences that haven't complied with this so that we can send out the letter saying, please be aware, you know, this is a, a law. This is not just us saying, you know, you have to do this. This is, this is a, a huge compliance issue. So that's something if I could ask down the road, we have that on board and we can move forward. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's key. Yeah. 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 Um, and is there any issues with having those callers' names on our website? Um, or do you, is it uh better to uh say please give the office a call for a list of approved or uh, um I should say approved callers. Yeah. Um so we don't wanna we don't want to discount anyone, but I can tell you my experience with the hauler when I said you have to inspect it and you have to provide the information. They were like, what are you talking about? No, 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 we take care of this. I, I said, and, and they were giving me the runaround and I said, I'm a township supervisor. I'm well aware of what needs to be done. Please don't give me this runaround. And then they changed their tune a bit. Whether or not they submitted a report, I don't know. So um, is, there, is there any issues that we would have if we were to list callers that are currently provide us with their certificate and all that other stuff? So any issues with that? Uh, it's on our website. Before you comment, yeah. my thoughts would be we put the list of callers and then have something at the bottom that, you know, if you're a caller and you'd like to register, here's how you do it. Here's the here's the material. Because we obviously don't want to play favorites. We obviously right. want to create the illusion of uh, some things are to tell people who they can well, we, right. we, I just, I don't like the idea in principle because okay. any caller in a township should be abiding by a old ordinance, which requires them to fill out a form electronically so that the township can determine whether these unlocked systems are actually functioning as they're designed. Agreed. So the, Agreed, but just as a help for homeowners, if, just so that they're kind of safeguarded, if they call somebody out, they would know they're already completed. They already are certified to work with the township. So, so Colin's point is Everyone has to be on Everybody should be compliant. Yeah. That's to a certain extent, the onus also has to be on the residents to know the law, understand what their pumper hauler should be doing to comply with our ordinances. Right. And that's and that's part of the messaging that and the education yeah. that we need to do. And okay. we need to respond to so I guess that's what our website has to reflect. The website has to say, please make sure that your pumper pumper hauler is right. um, certified and makes the correct. Um, notification to the proper authorities. I guess. So we need some kind of language like yeah. that on our website. We may need to pass the yeah. to make sure that it's it's correct. Okay. But yeah. and, and I know that the letter which Hydra Terra sent on the updated old guidebook explicitly included information about the new ordinance, why it was important, and how to comply with. So the education campaign is only going to be done. Yeah. yeah. I think putting something on the website. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're going to have a lot of phone calls. And people yeah. say, who should I go with? And we get to say, you could choose anyone who you want, but make sure they understand that these are the steps that they need to take. I mean, in, in essence, that's what we need. Plus, to Joe wanted to have another meeting in April, I think he said. Yeah. Yeah. To educate yeah. Residents. I guess we'll see how many people turn out to the town as well. And so uh, you make a reminder there too. Yeah, yeah. So he, if we call any kind of cemetery house, he was registered with Mary. You can, but you yes. can, you can choose whoever you want to go with. Right. So I guess I guess we don't want to be endorsing any particular business because everyone should be compliant. Is what I'm understanding correctly here. So it would not be wise for us to list people. But if, but if if you called over to the office and said, hey. I have no clue who would you recommend. We could certainly make a recommendation from people who we've dealt with before, but we're not endorsing any particular agency. Yeah, I, I get it 100% where yeah. you and Colin are coming from with this, but I, I kind of approach this the way Kelly did. I don't yeah. get my septic tank pump that often. So you know, who do I go with? Rather than Every four figure, years, Peter. Figure, I know. <laughs> rather than figure, four years. <laughs> rather than figuratively cracking open the yellow pages and just looking up like septic baller, you know, going and, and seeing a list of choices essentially, and then you just pick one. But 
if we can't for whatever reason put that up there like that, it's just a phone call out of the township. So or call all all R and C, they should be able to tell you yeah, answer. Even if they're registered. Yeah. 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 Right. It counts as we can so no to posting, but yes, if they call in. If, 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 if the township call, if, if a resident of the township yeah. calls and asks for a list of registered callers, you can certainly provide that information. I would not make a recommendation out of any of the five. Well, well yes, yeah. yeah. no, no, we wouldn't. Yeah. Like, yeah. So their current caller is like, you go up top, the yeah. 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 top stuff doesn't yeah. show up. Uh, uh, I hit on my up there. They gave me the. Would you say you heard me? I sounded good. I got it. Like uh, one off. I think it's Marissa. <laughs> no, they just dropped. Okay. They they unmuted themselves. I think they took the phone call. But anyway, um, yeah, we'll navigate that. But long story short, is if you call, you can give me the list. But putting it up on the website is kind of a no no no. Oh, thank you. Yep. Okay. Uh, if we don't have anything else on that, next item on the agenda is the proposed short term rental ordinance. Uh, Attorney Farlow would like the board to review some of the discretionary and legislative open ended questions that were presented by the ordinance, such as enforcing the entire property management code or maintenance code excuse me, with specific words with specific spec sections respecting these units. Um, this was something to talk a little bit about on, on Saturday, but. Uh, uh, if you have anything that you, you want to add specifically on that, I'm honestly like I want to read through it a little more, but I don't really have any objections to the short term rental ordinance other than one section is anything more than five days. I think that threshold's a little low for something being rented out. It's not five consecutive days the way it's stated, it's just five days in a calendar year. Um, for me, I, I don't know about what you guys think, but short term rental could be like maybe like 20 or 30 days out of the year. Excuse me, do you also yeah. want to review what Glenn B said? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so we were yeah. talking, we were talking, I was looking at uh, the stuff that Kraft gave us um, in comparison to the stuff that you gave us. And um, one of the phrases that called me was the term family. And Glenn said that was a reflection of what our zoning ordinance said. Because why can't you rent a house up to five to four different people, let's say, you know, just for bedrooms, why can't you? have it rented out for four unrelated individuals and said, well, that's because then it turns into a boarding home situation. But, um, I, you know, I was like, do we have to repeat that language? But if this is like short term, um, looking more like an Airbnb, like does, yeah. does, does it, does it, why can't four people, you know, I, I guess I was looking at Glenn's paper, not yours. The, the yeah. Short, the short term, and I haven't looked at them now, Yeah. the short term rental ordinance as I've drafted it, limits the number of people, I think, based upon sewage flows, mm -hmm. right? So it's not an arbitrary number for a house that's 3,000 right. square feet. It, it makes sense based upon that square foot. So I, I think that's how yeah. I have it drafted. That's how yes. most short-term rental ordinances are drafted, including the model one, um, which I base on that. The model ordinance for short-term rentals comes from the Pocono's because they have so many of them. Mm -hmm. And that's how they do it in that area, and that's how I've advised my municipalities to do it in this area. Yeah, yeah my stuff is just a little jumble. I have to kind of yeah. be organized with what I have. Yeah, I got to sit down. I appreciate yeah. it, though. Um, yeah, because Glenn gave us his stuff when we had yours. I like, and you had your check sheets with it, too. Yeah. You had some check sheets that went along with it? Well, we, we need. To the extent that the short-term rental ordinance requires a yearly permit and inspection, yeah, someone will need to develop a checklist for the code officer mm -hmm. to have when he's asking to perform mm -hmm. those inspections. Mm -hmm. uh, it's certainly something I can create. Uh, the, the, the person most appropriate to do is probably uh, craft. craft because they're the ultimate you know, yeah. entity responsible for enforcing the property maintenance. Yeah, will be incorporated by reference into this one. And Muhlenberg had this very comprehensive uh, checklist also. So, okay, so we need to revisit this one what, one more time the next Yeah, week. I think by next month. Okay. Uh, the, could, uh, the registration I, forms that were good yeah, for by yeah. craft were, were good. And I could share with you, Jesse, all the additional ones that I have. So, um, I think maybe what I'll do is I'll just leave them all out on that table because it's easier if it's spread out. 
because they're all fairly similar. There's nothing that the language is just a little bit, they all vary a little bit by dates and terms, but for the most part, they're all fairly similar. But there was some nice check sheets in there. I mean, the concept is to make sure that people are safe, what they're doing, and this concept of a short-term rental isn't being used to circumvent any inspection issues otherwise. Yeah, okay. safety and welfare of the people renting it out. And so it boils down to being able to enforce the safety related concerns that we have for yeah. whether it's a short term sort of thing, so we're going to have an Airbnb, we have a house for the lots of people who are long term, like the time in. Yep. So um, I think we'll be ready by next month, but. Um, I'll be helping all with this yeah. other papers. Because yeah. So is, is there is there anything that the board wants me to do between now and next month? Yeah. Um, could we send you an email if that's the case? Because I think we got to get Jesse caught up a little bit with yeah. that. Yeah. He has any other concerns, and we'll send one email with yeah. any other issues. That... I think the only thing that might be out of cycle would be if we ask him to like prep something or like work with craft on on something. But um, I can't immediately think of anything. Okay. But I'm sure something probably will come up. But we do we do need. As a final aspect of this ordinance, we do need the checklist. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so we can work on that between now and next time, and yeah. and hopefully get crafted away on that. Yeah. Time. Yeah. Okay. So I'll I'll continue working on that. I'll bring Jesse up to speed, and we'll get something that. Thank you very much. And that's going to be yeah. the same situation for the long term. Yeah. Long yeah. 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 Peter, not the not the step your choice, but yeah. the but the segue. Um, most of the long term rental ordinances that I've done. Are, are very similar to the short term. Yes. Well, yes. That, that was actually one of the suggestions that Kraft had was to combine it into a single rent ordinance yep. short term and long. Well, I don't like to do that. I do like I do like to keep them separate because then you're then you have to mess with the definitions and they can have a tendency to become confusing or overlap. So I do like to bifurcate them, but they're they're very similar. And I guess that you, to ask how you weigh in on this. Long term versus short term. Do we include hotels with long term? I mean, okay. just just that 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 different, or do we have a separate hotel ordinance, or do we want to as proposed for long term? If anything, I think classify the hotel as being more than short term. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, the, the the breakdown that I have in my head is like we'll use the type me in as an example. When they have regular room rental, that's short term. When they have somebody running it out for months at a time, that slides it into long. Term. Right. That's what they do. Right. No, like they, they would that they, yeah. in that individual property, they would actually have both ordinances be applied to that. So, so just because the board wants hotel in the definition of both short term and long term. I mean, potentially. I, I don't know if that don't technically know. falls into the use of a hotel, but like tuck me in, you can write it by the month, as far as I know. The inspection what you, requirements are typically the same right, thing, right. yeah, regardless. Right. But. So, so whatever your best legal opinion is on that, because we know that there's an issue, and again, we're not targeting anyone, but we want to do what's best and safest for the residents of this community, and and that's the problem. We have no regulation. Easily slide in the next agenda item number seven is 4050 Conrad Wiseman Parkway. Um, there are safety and fire hazard concerns. Um, there, there is the possibility of getting an administrative search warrant. However, Kraft was concerned that there may be a uh, Fourth Amendment uh, concern in, in doing that. Um, we need to talk with you, obviously, about the, the legal ramifications around having. Uh, Craft go in and do inspections on the property based on the uh, egregious safety problems that have been observed on the exterior of the building. What egregious safety problems uh, exist? Where where to start? That's the I guess <laughs> part of it when they fall to the unit of an individual um, when they just were walking around uh, staircases weren't being secured. Uh, there was roofing issues. Um, which is, this, this person was living under the conditions where it wasn't a uh, functioning toilet. Um, there was a concern for um, molds, but also um, wow. uh, just the entire unit. Um, you could get more detail from craft. Um, and then there was observation for properties. No, this, they, they were. This is an incident. 
Oh, this so, so there was a particular incident. The person has been removed from the unit and is in safer conditions. They, they actually condemned that particular yeah. unit. So, so, so knowing what the state is of one, there have been other concerns by other individuals, but can how, you, how did the township come to learn of that? Was it a 911 Yeah, I think it was a 911 call. And the fire department called out to our emergency management coordinator uh, as to what do we do now. It was just an unusual circumstance. But when when did the inspection happen? Oh my goodness, I don't know. Two, two, three months ago? Yeah. Yeah, I would say yeah. mid-December, early January. Yeah. 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 Well, does, does, does Kraft have reason to believe that other yes. Yes. units are yes. equally yeah. yes. based, based upon based upon visiting the property? I mean, did they did they wit witness? Yes. Yeah, there's prior complaints and they, they witnessed obviously not the interior of the other units, but the exterior condition coupled with the interior condition of the unit that they did see. And what what do, so you could probably do get we, do we have a power code in township? No. You could probably get comment from the who was I think then assistant fire chief, who's now currently the chief, as well as from John, who's the EMC that was there, as to what their concerns are for safety with respect to um fire access so that they might in fact did, 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 did the police department investigate the incident? I don't recall. Is there? I don't recall. I don't recall. Yes, I was there. I was the one that responded. It was me that called John, not the okay. fire chief. Okay. He wanted to respond. Okay. I called John. Excellent. To make sure something was done. What was a report generated? Yes. Did did that complainant or caller give you reason to believe that other units were equally unsanitary? Some of the neighboring uh, tenants did voice some concern. And you spoke with them? Huh? You spoke with those people? We, yeah, when I'm there, we're there quite often on domestics and stuff. And then other residents would come and talk to and, us. And, and they talk to you about the condition of the units and you have their names? No. But we, we Do you have a way to contact them? Huh? Do you have a way to contact them? Not really, because they come and go. We just made a, a, a meth, pretty big drug arrest there again, and we were inside that. <laughs> so, so and it's here, here's water. Sorry, Rudy. it was deplorable. I mean, it, it's not really applicable to be in, even in the one where we just made drug arrests, but the probation department, they were on parole. So, so here, here's what I'm here. <laughs> Based upon what Kraft has seen and the police department has seen in the past few months, it's simply a matter of compiling this information and submitting either administrative or criminal search warrants based upon probable cause to determine what types of code violations and criminal conduct is occurring. If, if you get administrative and criminal search warrants based upon probable cause as issued by the magistrate, you've satisfied your Fourth Amendment requirements. Okay. So it's, it's simply a matter of investing, having Kraft and the police department investigate you know, and submitting warrants. Okay. Okay. So we need to get Kraft and the police department connected up to be able to, to get the proper documentation in order to make that request to the court. Yeah, and I'm, I'm happy to assist as well. Okay. But there's you know, Someone needs to go patronize the business and invest, investigate, see what's happening. Let's go soon. There's a lot. Yeah. I've seen and I kind of don't want to be near the place. I think the office manager might be willing to have a conversation. With people too. Yeah. Yeah, she's willing. 
Okay, so the, I'm, I'm seeing the takeaway on this is police department, column, craft, and potentially one or more of the board of supervisors will, will contribute to getting that uh, administrative uh, search warrant request filed. I'll do whatever I need to do. Yeah. It, it should be a specific at the top, but it's, yeah. it certainly seems like we have enough eyewitness accounts having been there properly to pull these warrants. Okay. I think it was there. So, and so I, I think part of the conversation was if there's a fire there, if there's anything else, you're looking at this, not only the safety of the residents that live there, but the people coming in to perform rescue services. And it's the, the, the stairs are held together by so that would be, sheer tension. So that, that would be a, a property made into a violation. Yeah. 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 Because we because the again, the probable cause has to be based upon codes and ordinances that the township actually has. Yeah. So we have property maintenance, we have building code. Uh, we would assert those violations in the administrative warrant, and to the extent criminal conduct is occurring there, we would assert those in a criminal search warrant. Yeah. Before you guys leave, I'll pull up the uh, the agenda packet from. I think I'm pretty sure that we said that it's December. I'll show you the it's pictures. The agenda, yeah. So yeah. I'll show you the pictures that they had taken at the time, and it's it's pretty bad. So. Okay. Uh, if we don't have anything else on that. Uh, make make a motion instructing the township's professionals and police department to prepare administrative and criminal search warrants for this problem. I'll make a motion to authorize the township professionals and the public police to department prepare and file. and file, thank you, um, the necessary items around the administrative and criminal search warrants. No, that can... Roll call, Peter. Very aye. That's aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Stone Group request for the Medical Bond. This has since been withdrawn, as we mentioned earlier. Um, I guess they're, they're going to put that back in after they uh, provide ad built plans and all the other items that we discussed during public comment. Uh, item number nine is the CWPLD 37 Main Street. Uh, this is the request for release of escrow money. Engineer has, has inspected the property and recommends releasing the amount of $43,164.25. Uh, per Engineer Hess's report, I will make the motion to release the $43,164.25 from the escrow. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Mary. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Well, um, one other item on that topic, if I may. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the owner, who I believe is here and is representative, did request a construction modification. Um, two components: uh, one, to change location of the, the security fence that's, that's around the self storage unit. Uh, we wanted to push it really to the western side of the property, in close proximity to the property. Um, so I had sent an email Tuesday with some photographs and what have you. And some information. Uh, they also want to enlarge um, the area that would be dedicated for, for a dumpster with an enclosure. Um, and that would be within that secure fence on the other side of the site. Um, so I don't have any real particular issues with the dumpster. It, it does reduce the drive aisle going around the building in a self storage. You know, they had 24 feet, it's going to be a little less than 24, not a big deal. It's not like it's a high traffic area. Um, but with regard to, to the fence and pushing against the property line, I, I did offer you some recommended conditions, um, basically to confirm in the field where the property line is, number one, um, and making sure the fence would be set back at least one foot from the property line. But in addition, you know, there are some existing trees, shrubs, other vegetation along there, and it's right up against um, the 4050 uh, property that we were just talking about. Um, so I wouldn't want to see that vegetation be removed to facilitate putting the fence in 
you know, basically be one foot off the property. So that setback may have to be adjusted a little bit to um, preserve some of that tree. And then the area, so the area in between what was going to be pavement for the internal circulation, the fence was right against that. But now we're pushing the fence towards the property line. And again, just uh, originally they had asked about maybe putting stone in there. Um, my recommendation is to avoid uh, creating more impervious cover, let that just remain in grass. And I think they were okay with that. Um, so that's a modification they're asking the township to allow her to deviate from shown on the approved land development plan. Basically, as long as there's not a stormwater issue, there's no there, there would be no stormwater issue as well I'm, as I'm for good. preservation of the vegetation, the good. tree line. Yeah, yeah, it's a buffer, yes, the self storage, the lights there, and the hotel, and the property at 40 50. And then they would be uh, retaining or uh, keeping the line of sight there, the vegetation, would be yeah, yeah, and, and that's the intent. Yeah. Does that seem reasonable to Mr. Habecker? Yeah, I would. Uh, one thing we had talked about was like, can you get out of the fence? You can't hear me. My big mouth. My big mouth. <laughs> okay. Uh, and with the garbage issue that just came up, uh, we, had, we had talked about doing the uh, thing outside and decided against it, just uh, the light and inside. With the cost going up drastically, it would make it would make it a little more uh, positive for us to take that outside, if that is a possibility. In other words, we put the dumpster outside um, because the idea would be to, to be able to access it um, if we could. Uh, I think that the the ordinance is that you if you have a rental property, you are allowed to have your own garbage disposal. So if we we would then pull out of the garbage disposal and use our own. At the rates we were at, it wasn't worth it. At these rates, it would be worth it. I could easy, easy get rid of my garbage so, for less than that. You would still be installing a dumpster then? Oh yeah. With, with a screen enclosure around it? Okay. That, I, I guess it would be ideal to know exactly where on the site outside of the fence. Right, that you it would be right at the entrance. Right near the entrance. Right near okay. the entrance. Uh, okay. I don't know. I know there's a lot of other properties that isn't enclosed. I don't know if it would need to be enclosed mm -hmm. or enclosed. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's discreet. Right. And it also, you know, then prevents uh, debris around the dumpster from blowing away. It helps with that. Okay. With that. We would need to do more calculations, like, but it would reopen that door if that's open with you. I think the only thing would be, you know, making sure that you spot it in a location that the trucks could actually come in, right, and serve. And if we had some of that problem of trying to figure that they want a certain angle, and uh, so it may or may not be able to be done. Like I said we would need more homework, but yeah. before we pour the concrete pad for the inside, I would need to know from you. Perhaps you know the board's inclined. And to approve this construction modification, the fence with the conditions, mm -hmm. and also relocating the dumpster outside of the secured fence, subject to let me just take a look at it, make sure it makes sense. Yeah, I have no problem. It's looking great so far. Trying. <laughs> Trying to jump through all the hoops. <laughs> Brian, I'm at 901 Canal Road. It would be for nine. 25 or 30? 30, 935. She doesn't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we want to issue a motion approving the fence and then the dumpster relocation subject to engineering approval, correct? Yep. You want to take your first motion, yes? Sure. I'll motion to take the outside and screen it off and so okay with the engineers and, and move the fence. And move the fence. It's fine with the engineers. Yep. Does that cover the concrete pad that motion? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That would cover the expansion of that as and for sure. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and and the fence relocation for the conditions that were recommended. Correct. Okay, good. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Yeah. Take away for you guys as we're okay with it, but we want to be clear with the engineer. 
Okay, next up on the agenda is the culverts and related site improvements. Uh, this was Marion Drive North, Charity, Drive, uh, Charity Road, Marion Drive South, the paving and guide rail improvements on Rushford Road. Everything has been completed and we did receive the final payment request February 5th, but with $28,000, uh, $28,002.57. Um, we actually, we made a motion for workshop to fix it, didn't we? No? Okay. Um, I'll make a motion then uh, to approve the final payment for the culverts and related site improvements to a total of $28,002.57. Yeah. Just a second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Do you have the paper? Um, I do. Right. It's a form of sign that they asked. Can I resign? Okay, you'll sit here. It's hard to get him in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's not signed. It's if she has signed it, she's got to. Okay, that's not. Yeah. It doesn't need to be checked. I signed it. Yeah. All of the other check. That's not big anymore. Moving right along, the next item on the agenda is the 2024 road projects. Uh, engineer has gave us estimates for a couple of roads. Uh, first one is Sheridan Road South from Wayne County, Boulevard, Lebanon County. This was $326,445.90. Sheridan Road North from Wayne County, Boulevard, School Road, which is $370,601.40. Southport Road, $901,484.90. And Wintersville Road, $532,261.90. Grand total for all of the things that we asked them to look at is a little over $2.1 million. So based on that, and how we do not have that in our budget for sure, um, <laughs> my recommendation from talking with the road crew is to uh, address Sheridan Road South from Wayne Penn Boulevard in Lebanon County. That is, I think, by far the easiest, um, e the worst by far, I should say, yeah. um, we have in the township. Certainly needs the most attention. He said um, the yeah, the yeah. Sheridan South of Lebanon. Okay. So the other items that we would have is um, we obviously have some other things prepped, um, but I, I would also like to ask that Chuck prepped uh, a little bit of whether it's one mile or one mile school road as a design. That way we can put that in as a grant request potentially. Um, beyond that, the other roads that we want to look at for this year, um, Woods Drive is, I think, the, one of the next, if not third, maybe fourth on the list of roads that are in dire need of attention. Um, getting the uh, design around Woods Drive would be ideal. And then we have the failing culvert now in Wintersville mm -hmm. that we're going to need to address, uh, as well as the Mary Drive Storm Drain project that we already have in flight with UGI, the guide rails on the what was the cost for the Mary Drive UGI thing? Uh, thirty eight thousand. That that was. It's okay. Yeah, yes. that was both phases and Mary. Like total. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. some of the thought was hmm, installing the storm sewer mm -hmm. on the side of the road, and in the future, oh, there adding is. some inlets on the oh, other that's side. The So, so 35, that's the guide rails. Yeah, yeah that was, oh, yeah. yes. And then the Samaria so Drive is like 20 something. Yeah, it is. It's, it's like 22 for the first phase. Yeah. Yeah. What's the second phase? It's roughly like 7,000. Okay. I thought it was like closer to the fall, but I, I'm not getting So, if we, I, uh, do you guys have the, the account balances on your? Yeah. 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 I, I think we would do an attempt to utilize liquid fuels. Yeah. Yeah. We have it in liquid fuels, but we got to be sensitive about not spending too much. Right. So, okay. so we have, uh, and then we, no, I know it, I know it's terrible. Um, Just rough numbers. We have the money. Yeah. Just, just in, in 
in the, the regular road district fund already. So I'm I'm pulling just rough numbers. Let's say I'm rounding up to four hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Makes me want to bomb it. But we're also gonna between our um well return back. We're turned back, we're gonna get close to $150,000. So even if we were to deplete the road district fund, so and we typically use I don't think we use fifteen twenty thousand dollars out of it. Let's call it twenty thousand dollars and set roughly twelve line right. things. So so twenty thousand dollars on top of the um Sheridan Road, the um uh the guide rails, the Marion Drive. I think we're okay. So you'd be looking at is that money for anything else? No, but yeah, certain materials. Thank you. But you mentioned school road. Are you considering another portion of school road? Because school road always needs to be done, but I know it's it's an expensive prospect to do another mile school road. No, I, I thought you had mentioned that. I did. Okay. So okay. You know, I'd, I'd, like, like, I'd like to drive. I'd like to have look at the drive design for the purposes of doing the liquid fuels, but I would like school road to be done for the purposes of trying to put it in for a grant. Okay. Gotcha. Roadmaster has the comments. Yes. Come on up on the podium, Butch. I'm going to see a school road, something done on school road, not all of it. Portion of it rather than yeah, it is than, uh, than Woods Drive. Woods Drive is a bit smaller, though. Yeah, it's awesome. smaller, oh, but, smaller. But, uh, but if, if uh, uh, I I think uh, school road people would use if the portion of school road would be, be fixed up, I think the people would use that more than Woods Drive. Uh, because uh, you know, uh, I have a lot of friends that that drive on uh, school roads, and, uh, and uh, I did that. a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. been ten. It would be eight next on guys. Six, 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 yeah. So the rest, I don't know. Uh, well, I don't, yeah, you yeah. What you should think of uh, uh, doing the bank on the school road versus starting where you stop and, and continuing from then on. I'm, so I'm, kind, of, I'm kind of apprehensive about half work building it. Me, me too. Yeah. I am uh, more accepting. Yeah. Yeah. Got, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And you can go as far as your budget Thank will you. allow. Yeah. 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 That's what we need to do. Yeah. And that's why I figured if my grants, whether it's LSA or I'm sure it's probably not applicable for the Hawaiian Broadway Road, but if there's a grant thing that we can chase, if we put have it a uh, plan prepped and we just have it ready to go every year, maybe we'll get lucky yep. in the next like one or two years on yep. getting some of it, all of it, whatever we put in for. I would say you want to identify the grant and put any effort into it. Well, I mean, I, my stance on it is we need to do something with it sooner rather than later. So it would, be, it would be good to know whether we get a grant or we say in two years we need to try to take the money out of the bills to do it. We, we got to know what, what we're looking at trying to fight off here. Okay. Uh, the, <laughs> the only other thing me and Dave were talking about was. Uh, uh, you guys getting a loan, low interest loan or something? Yeah, that's always an option. We have to be sensitive. Our, our total operating budget is not terribly large. So we have to be, <laughs> that's another shit to help. Um, we have to be sensitive about capital expenditures to be satisfying uh, a loan for the next 20 to years or so. Fr yeah. Frankly, taking out a loan when we have the sewer project moving it, is not. not a, I, I, I'm with you. I'm with you 100% on that. We have to be very sensitive about the long term impacts of so I mean, we get the township to Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've shied away that from that in the past six plus years. And yeah. that would be a, only if we absolutely had to have to have to yeah. Like, let's, I'm going to throw a, a hypothetical here. Like, we had a, an entire road washout and went well crafted budget for it. We got to do something about this. It's a major thoroughfare. Then. Right. 
the proverbial uh, uh, crap is just man, we need to do something and the problems follow them. Um, but we're not going to go into that light. Okay. So, thank you much. Anything else? No, thank, thank you. you. Okay. So, uh, Chuck, the two things, and I'll make a motion in a second. The uh, section, another section of school road for the purposes of future use and and or grant submissions as well as the um, further details on that so failing boulder on wintersville yeah so yeah. for school road what i'm hearing here yeah. is, is take a look at it trying to determine the cost for you know hundred feet thousand feet yeah. something like that yeah. so we can see where we go. that thousand dollars is going to be like 20 feet okay so yeah. it looks Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so basically, it's four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. It costs more than that. Yeah. Now that was done with um, cold place recycling. You know, cement with the existing okay. asphalt was ground up, and and cement with our common yes, yeah, that was added into it. It it did make it very very uh, nice. base. You know, I'm starting to wonder if cold place recycle uh, might be a little. Less expensive, possibly, but then we got to add in a lot more version aggregate, and then the paving on top. Of it. So let me let me evaluate that yeah. a little bit and get some numbers for you, budget numbers for you yeah. again, and then we have them in our pocket. And I'll also try and identify some grant opportunities for that. If there's anything out there, that's that's for us. But I'm here. What I'm hearing though is so Sheridan Road South. Yes. You know we have a little bit of design work on that. There's the problem with that road is a lack of drainage. Yep. So the cost of it includes a lot of drainage. I think there's five or six culverts that we would have to replace. We'd also want to put some under drain along the edges of the road to pick up uh, groundwater um, that's basically getting in underneath the pavement, saturating the soils, and then it can salt, and then the pavement moves and it breaks up. Um, so we'll we'll proceed with that. Um, and then the Marion Drive drainage mm -hmm. project, and that one there, I think we can get that one going relatively quickly if I can get um, it qualified through to use liquid fuels. Yeah. Um, but I would say at right. this point, and I'm not trying to break the project up, but you know the cost of 22 is kind of reasonable and it's in the sweet mm -hmm. spot. We can get quotes for that versus public bidding. Mm -hmm. We are setting that up. To have basically knockouts in the inlet boxes on there, that in the future we can go across the road and mm -hmm. put boxes on the other side. And basically, that would accommodate if we ever repave that section of Marion Drive, yes. we get a crown in the road. Now we're going to, the water's not going to flow across the road like it's today. The crown's going to keep it from across the road, so we need inlet boxes on the side. So that can all be done you know, as part of a paving project in the future. Um, and UGI, I believe, is going to be boring this new line, but they are going to be have to always cut at the connection points. Um, there is some patching there. I'd rather see the patches sit for a, a spell. And then we see how the drainage works after it goes in. And then if we decide that, that section of Mary Drive is repaid, then we add in cross pipes and two inlet boxes and we set. So we'll we'll work towards that on, on Marion Drive, um, and then I'm also hearing the guide rail project. Yeah. So yes. what I would like to do on that, I think, I think for the guide rail, in, again, solicit quotes on that because I think if I'm under a hundred thousand, I think we can get that qualified for liquid fuels with quotes. So I think that's yeah yeah. Right. yeah. So we we'll, we'll get on that, mm -hmm. and and again, you know, there were three roads. That were identified for um, guide rail. William Penn Boulevard is, is the one that needs yeah. most yeah. right now. So I think let's get that one done yeah. and then see where things shake out. Because that work, you know, that's all stuff with the contractor work. We got contractors. We typically get that done pretty quick, you know, some quotes. So we're, we're adding on to that the little tiny bit that we need at Hickory Road. Oh, okay. I don't know if that would be. Okay, I don't know if we're going to be able to get interest from anybody to do that on its own because of how small it is. But if we okay. get somebody to do William and getting that like 30 feet or whatever it is on Hickory would be ideal. Okay, yep. And 
and sometimes economy of scale makes it worthwhile. Mm -hmm. So so we'll include every of that in addition to the only pack. Well, if if you you're saying on Hickory Road, mm -hmm. when you should be following our road, that could not fall in. I don't know that we want to touch following our road yet. Yep. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, okay. we don't. <laughs> but I think we Hickory's Hickory Okay. Good. Um, and then also there was the Wintersville Road call. So I don't know if you had a chance to see my email, how I tried to describe it. There's two culverts today. The one that's rusted out, I think we can eliminate and take the drainage down to a more recently installed bigger pipe um, and do some improvements there. But we don't necessarily have to do a replacement culvert in that case. Yeah, deal. Uh, so, I read your, your note that it would be a small pipe underneath, underneath the, the driveway. Way. And when, when Butch and I were out, we, we posed that question to, to the owner there, and they seemed okay with it. Okay. Now, Pipe would be one thing, but we may also be able to profile that driveway that the roadside soil basically comes across the driveway on the surface and avoid a pipe. Um, because I, you know, but we have to look at the grades and so forth there. So um, is that something we want to get going? Because that that bottom of that is yes, not yeah, we, we definitely, that we definitely needs to be on the 2024 dog. Okay, very good. I think that covers. The direction I was looking for um, this evening, so we can get some of these things going. Yeah, it felt like we were really behind, and, and stuff happens. But, but I was hoping that we January we would have been getting started on this council here. It was my fault. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, but but nonetheless, yeah. we can get some of these things going. I, I'd like to get the paving one especially going because I, you know, I don't want to wait too far into the summer painting season and the construction season yeah. and everybody's busy and no one's interested or they'll or they'll bid on it they'll bid it high. Yeah. And if I'm gonna do it I want to make some money. But yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Whereas now they're rather they're trying to line up their work. So okay. That's a handful there. I don't yeah. I'm gonna keep you in trouble. Yes. Okay. And so I'm gonna so, try to encapsulate so, all of the motion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna try to encapsulate all that into a motion. So, so go ahead and call. The, the one hundred thousand dollars threshold for those which those funds applies to the prevailing wage. Uh, okay. Okay, so we still public we pay, but no prevailing wage. Yes, yeah, so, but that still helps because now we're not. It does. The part is still the part. part the still keep the part. Yes. Okay. So okay. I'd, I'd like to make a motion to authorize engineer S to prepare the design work or, and uh, other related materials for Sharon Road South and Wayne Head Boulevard. The uh, guide rail project on William Penn Boulevard and Hickory, the culvert reparation on Wintersville Road, and the design work for uh, another mile of School Road and Woods Drive. Oh, and Woods Drive. Yes, and Woods Drive. Please. Okay. Second. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Remy. Aye. Desi. Aye. Okay, since we already sort of covered this, guide rails, uh, yep, we're prioritizing Wayne Penn Boulevard and Hickory Road. We had an estimate uh, 38500 following a road to follow next year. And uh, take care of any necessary PA 1 clause on drives. Yeah. Um, Next, we also kind of already covered this, the extension of the stormwater pipe along Mary Drive and Main Street. UBI will be relocating the gas line on March 4th. The pre-construction meeting was today. How'd that go? Um, it was supposed to be the day, but UGI changed it to tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Okay. I think Butch know that. We'll be here at 11. Um, just for the benefit of everybody, uh, my anticipation is that UGI, because I, I pretty much told him so, I said, I think it will allow you, it will allow you to close the room yeah. safer. They'll be able to work more efficiently. It will only be daytime closure. They, it won't be an overnight or anything like that. So yes, we have traffic coming into town. Yeah, we actually have there. Okay. Thank you. So Butch and I will be meeting with UGI tomorrow, and they do plan on getting started Monday. Nice. And I'm just not sure of the duration. Um, my guess is two to three days, but I'm not exactly sure. Let's see how it is. Go find out. Yeah, so we'll be fine out. 
But a heads up to everybody, you know, Monday that road will be closed. Okay. Can we send out a Yeah, let's send it out on the, the list. How about we'll find out tomorrow what their think of duration is. So we'll come back here and let you know. We can do a blast. Everybody can go. I'm excited to talk to you by the people that signed up and get that notification. I have to get my parents to sign up. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I have to get my parents to sign up. Moving right along, uh, the next two items. Uh, I don't know for reasons of possible litigation, we should skip those. Yeah, or... they'll be reserved for executive session. Okay, okay thank you. Um, since there is not an executive session noted on here, um, do I make a motion to amend the agenda? No, it'll be, it'll be announced here, which okay. is allowed under the subject. Okay. Um, the next is the equipment repairs. Uh, there was a repair made to the, the trucks or one of the trucks, excuse me, for the mounting bracket for the shoes that's attached to the plow. Most of them made it to favor the workshop meeting to approve the bill for Agritier in Richland at $552.82. Um, any other items? Uh, we can do the plow estimates um, based on some feedback from the road crew. Um, we're going to forego spending that out of the general fund, but uh, what I asked was to get some details on the quotes so that we can put that in as an LSA request. Um, food for talk that came up on Saturday was maybe seeing about getting some quotes together for a truck to go yes. and plow. Yes. Since we're going to be asking for grants. Um, next item is tree trimming. Um, based on kind of the liability and our general lack of equipment for some of these things. We're going to solicit some quotes for that. Um, Butch, are you going to be making some calls to people about tree trimming? I think Val was going to spearhead okay. that. Okay, so Val has yeah. yeah. Oh, the tree trimming quotes. Well, I I don't know. I don't really know about that. I mean, I know we talked about it. Yeah. Other than that, I don't know. No, no, well, no, if the ballot is taken to the yeah. town, we'll let yeah. the ballot know with it. I would say if you're in the office, connect up with the I, I do know, I do, do know that Papa Hogan Township uh, has a, a chipper that we we could have. And uh, I do know where there's a bucket truck, too. Yeah, for safety reasons. I would say if you're not taking a yep. bucket truck and you don't have all the safety equipment, it would be much better to just hire somebody to do that. Yep. The chipper's not a bad idea because then we can yep. make most of the sub average to cut down. But yeah, nothing personal, but I don't want to send you up in the bucket truck for the trees. Yes. Um, uh, so so I, that's Bob. I know. I, okay. Okay, so we'll check in with Val on progress for that. But we'll just we'll get an update at some point over the next month. Um, road maintenance, um, cleaning of culverts and etc. We're going to work on updating some of the material we already have around the. It's actually a six-year maintenance plan. Get roads fixed and get them into the, the routine preventive maintenance cycle. Um, the problem that we face in the immediate future is it's very nice to put one of those plans in place. It's another thing to be able to start acting on it based on the state of the that we have. Right. So, but you got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. And I think we're still going to It's never too. It's so chunky. Oh, yeah. yeah. And this, yeah. And and that's, uh, yeah. We don't know that that's going to be a yeah. task, right? Yeah. That sort of thing, whereas this is going to be okay. the overarching right. plan of. Right, but it's time to take a look at this. Yeah. And that's where it builds it in. This, this is the people that's more than that. Okay. Got gotcha. it. So we're going to be doing some additional work on that, and we're going to be leveraging some additional tools to make sure that we properly track and get into the right cadence of that stuff. But like I mentioned earlier, we're in sort of firefighting mode right now between culverts that we had last year and some yeah. of the ones that have hit a, an almost dire condition in the past six to eight months. So uh, next is the appointment of sewage enforcement officers. This was resolution 2024-6. We made a motion at the February workshop meeting to approve this. Um, next after that is the winter storm alerts. Uh, winter storm alerts are available on our website at WMMZ. Peter, um, Peter yes. before you proceed, yeah. the resolution wasn't prepared at the workshop meeting, so oh, you'd, want, you'd want to add to adopt that resolution. Well, we, we, we motioned to, we had, the, we had that there assigned. Well, we, we didn't have the resolution. Well, we had 2024-6. That was the number, but we didn't have it in front of us. Oh. Okay, so we actually already motioned to approve that based on 
the fact that we knew who was going to be appointed. Improve its preparation. You want to okay. okay. Do you want to move to new okay. that? So I'll, I'll make a motion to adopt chapter six. Second. Hi. 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 Working on getting a communication together regarding around where to park vehicles during a snow emergency events. Uh, that'll go out in a uh, newsletter, be sent shortly, uh, along with some other helpful information around uh, grass clipping and things like that. Um, so, yeah. I'll call. We had a phone call this week from a resident who parked um, at the Black Dog, yeah. former Black Dog restaurant. Um, had his car written on a paper plate saying this is a private target lot, you yep. can't park here. Yeah, well, it's not part of that is now the whole thing is not a target. Well, depends it on where the car depends on where the car was parked. It was parked, he said it was parked near the grass, I'm assuming that the garage. Okay, so I mean. I'd have to look at it because if it was parked like right next to the building, that's part of it. Yeah. So okay. So there there might be maybe some misunderstanding between property owner or whoever put the, the, plate the, the plate was not signed. Okay. It was just a note. Yeah. 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 His his complaint was if that is a private parking lot, then why is the township plowing the whole darn thing? I said I will clarify that because I don't know it's a township. It should be plowing the whole thing. So the whole thing is the road. Yeah. Well, that, that's, so that's yeah. the issue where these people are. Yeah. yeah. And we had that conversation at the workshop. Yeah, like, we didn't make any know. decisions. Yeah. So and she wanted to ask Colin. Okay. <laughs> so, Colin, the, the, the thought we had at the workshop was there's, generally speaking, a pretty decent amount of space on the side of the road on here on Water Street without even having to have people park in the grass. That, for the purposes of, of snow emergency parking, we told people to come off Main Street if we could have uh, parking along that road where it's not normally permitted. Not normally permitted by your ordinance. There's an order. I forget what. Well, how far back it goes, but you're not allowed. To, you're technically not allowed to park on either side of Water Street. We don't really enforce it for the people that live there, though. Well, you have, you have two options. You can either formally amend that, that parking or your streets ordinance, or you can simply choose not to enforce that aspect of it during any snowstorm. Yeah, I don't think they told you PD's coming out here to doing parts. Yeah. 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 They're busy handling accidents. Yeah. I think usually tall. Uh, coming back here, Mortar Street, when you're flying, study, if you have cars parked on both sides of the road, yeah. Water Street. What about that's a tight fit to get the basketball court and stuff like that? The concern was if we have people who park on the ball field, they could get stuck. Yeah. Because you almost know, plowed a little spot out here. What's the liability to of the town? You know, like the parts park like the all the way back there. The ball like the, the people that have that own property on this side. Yeah. You know. You know that's that's their place to park. But uh, and then if you have people parked on the other side, we're going to be people on the main street, yes. basically. Yeah, yes. so that looks better than here. Wow. We don't have any good options. So you should park with fire to be a parking lot that the fire can be made sold. Right. It's probably and the fire point. So it's a private parking lot. And they used to park at Lee's Church, but that was sold. It's a private lot. Can you pass those to the owners? I have not had conversations with them, yeah. but again, it's, it's private property. It's property. And the point being is like, so now someone's moved their car and it's five days later, right. and they still have to move their car to private property. Right. And so now you, you, you've created a nuisance for the property also. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's, it just gets weird. Yeah. 
So, okay, we're going to have to work more on that. Yep. The eventual solution to this is when we have a new building and we have a parking lot. The last thing that I noticed when I drove through town yesterday, I kind of purposely look to see if we do have some emergency signs. There are some, yeah. but some of them are so faded. Okay, so we should get yeah. 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 an idea of how many we need from what's their replacements. Okay, since the plowing issue came up, I don't know who plows the alley from canal, comes out on the canal road. It's probably Butch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my fence is going to fall. It gets hit every year. And I'm in general. <laughs> If, if that happens, let us know because if there is something that happens, we'll get somebody to come out and help make it right, whether it's a divot in the grass or it's a big belt of fence or whatever, whether it's us doing something directly or something with the insurance, we obviously don't want to leave you stuck with damage as a result. It gets damaged every year. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to do more on that. It's, uh, yeah, find finding spots. Yeah, find finding spots. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not, I think the reader of all we can know is a thing while we all and the part of the year and the year. Yeah, we won't have to charge it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, we're keeping yeah. things moving. Uh the next item on the agenda is the MTCA uh lease. Nice. I got a little bit. Yeah. Thanks. Um the MTCA lease, uh, Kelly and some of the other MTAC members were here on Saturday and had some questions. Um, Collins, one of the questions that they had was around the um, indemn indemnification clause in there. And there, it sort of sounds like they're looking for financial, like the, the lease is looking for something financial. The way I read it, it was uh, indemnification from liability, for like if they would just sue us if somebody was in, in the trailer and hurt themselves. And I honestly haven't read the lease in, in months, months yeah. but I'm somewhat confident the indemnity is, is liability rather than financial. Correct. Yeah. Um, the other thing was the, if we were to ask them to move the trailer. Yeah. It, it, in, other, in other words, MTCA, the township is allowing you to put your trailer on our property to the extent that your trailer causes any harm. And the township is sued because it's on our property. The MTCA is indemnifying us for that liability or loss, yeah. which is standard in you know, this type of case. That was like the biggest thing. They had, they had some other questions about like the one dollar thing, and that's what I said is like it's largely symbolic. Yeah. Um, Kelly, did you have? Other than like those two are the two big ticket items I wrote down. Of the trailer. And moving the trailer, obviously. Yeah, that's not the 30, a 60 to 90 day period. Rather than the five days. Five days. I think I think we were pretty yeah, okay with we're the 60 day period. Yeah. In, in, in that case, just sign the lease and strike through that five day period, write the period of days that you'd like, sign. Both parties and both parties should sign and, and date mm -hmm. that specific acceptance as well as the last page of the lease. Okay. Are you okay with that, Kelly? So we're going to change that. You're going to sign and we're going to sign it back. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it would be like you went to a notary and you had to amend something or correct it, you would initial yeah. it. Initial date. Yeah. And then um, number 17, that effective date was 5123. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Do the same thing. Line, line it out with the effective date of length. March first or something like that. Okay. And sixty clarify the insurance property right there. That's because we ensure you guys. Okay. Uh, by the way, thank you for whether it was you or Don or whoever um, plugging up the hole on the trailer, getting the lock on the shed. Um, mm -hmm. And, and and Butch and uh, I know Butch um, went and dragged the field in preparation for the Little League. Uh, I went over work. Uh, uh, well, yes. <laughs> I went over uh, and did a rough thing, and I I tipped over. There's a a fine piece of uh, I don't know, cement building yet. 
uh, I should go over with that. Yeah. The smooth, smooth, uh, smooth thing that. And, uh, and, uh, but, uh, but I went over it day before it rained, so I have to wait until yeah. it dries down a little. And, uh, and go over it, try and go over it again. You know. But I, I got all the weeds out. Yeah. I, I, I have a, I have a towel at the side of the side of the ball field. I want to take the pipe around there and spray it on to the side a little. Okay. So, uh, it, I, it isn't a done deal yet. Well, no, but thank you for it's getting it. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Where's the rebar something here? What? The rebar. I can't find the rebar anymore. <laughs> okay. Um, Kelly, do you need a favor? Like whether it's if you see it or not, sees it. Have him like text me a picture, and even if I come up here with like a sledgehammer over the weekend, I'll I'll take care. No, we. I'll take care. I don't know, know where it is. Yeah. Can you find it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mark, it was screaming, but we could see it. Uh, yeah. You know, you uh, um the. Uh, seeds out there. You want wood on the bottom of those before the ball season starts, or or the bleachers. Yeah, the bleachers. Let me check at our next meeting, which is next week. Oh, okay. Well, we'll meet next week. Go yeah. and tell Don. Yeah, we did talk about it. They put in what at the bleachers. Yeah, yeah. we're we'll doing some of that work. So. Okay. And then the other thing while we're on MTCA uh, car show, yes. Saturday, May 11. And then the other item I want to say is yard sale, Saturday, you need to car. Okay. The uh, car show is one of the agenda items because we have the streets oh. moving over from okay. the front. Uh, the, the yard sale is not anything I have to for. And then just an FYI, I will be um, making up the general yard sale flyer, putting on some different activities and handing that out. Very good. I can't help you with the cars the cars and the church The two it's it's a good reason. <laughs> okay. Uh next up we already covered the trash and cycling contracts. Uh, moving right along Western Birch Joint Zoning Ordinance Section 403, which is the amendment around the keeping of pets and small domesticated farm animals. The meeting has been set for April 18, 2024, at 7 p.m. at the Heidelberg Township Building. Jesse and I will be in attendance unless Jesse has a scheduling conflict, in which case Irene being the, the alternate. Um, we'll go, we'll attend from the general looks of it. This is going to be an amendment that is applicable just for Marion Township. There was originally some interest from the other municipalities on participating, but it seems to have fizzled out. So. Next is the zoning hearings. There was one for 85 Main Street. This is the Twilight Acres location. They'd like to build on to the old social hall. There was a meeting that was held on February 22nd. The decision was made to grant the side yard request, but deny the front yard request. The front yard request was in one big dock, um, which presented a, a multitude of issues. And, uh, the one request around the side was permissible, and the other one doesn't really have a good solution, so it's not allowed. Um, item 26, the computer issues. Um, this is just that we had an ongoing support agreement with uh, an outside company. So that uh, maybe in the office, if they have an issue, they can pick up the phone and call somebody there and sort of try to play phone tag with me. Um, the initial cost for this would be uh, for the proposal from ISOL IT of $2,092.44 to install some new hardware, which would include a uh, router and Ethernet along with uh, a firewall and uh, three years of support on the, the firewall. Ongoing costs would be monthly. There are three options. Option one would be to pay uh, $260 a month and have other pay you know, costs incurred on top of that. Option two would be a managed service with the ability to have the support staff promote in and assist the secretaries, fix error errors, and resolve things immediately. This was $440, uh, $440 a month. Uh, and as well as option three, which was unlimited calls and assistance for six hundred and eighty dollars. So, excuse me, Peter. We yes. put it in this little blurb. So, if you scroll through the things, or if you can look, we yeah. have a quote for the computer stuff, and then we have a quote for the cable. Oh, which, 
Ready to get some arms on soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The, the SOW that I have is $1,974 for the sonic wall, as well as the on site services for getting that router and switch and everything set up. And then the cable. Doing the uh the rewiring cabling from the old demarcation point over to the rack in the old police room was two thousand three hundred and fifty cents. Yeah. So I'll be doing that as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It certainly it certainly would be beneficial. Um, it's a shame here closer to the building, but mm -hmm. it is what it is. Um. At this point, I think it's it's beneficial to the secretary staff, and it's certainly good to get all of that consolidated because we've got some we've got some weird thing <laughs> electrical. Yeah, that, I need to say we do love you. I, yeah. Yeah, and I don't I don't take it personally. Yeah. It's not, it's not, um, we'll have everyone leave if we don't do this. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, funny. yeah. I can't be everywhere all at once. I know this. Um, so I I would say let's let's do it. It's it's money, but we have the technology yeah. budget. So yeah, um, I'll make a motion to, and I'm going to do this in two pieces, uh, Lisa and Sue. Going to make a motion to authorize the expense for uh, ISIL IT. It's actually ISIL IT. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's part. I misread the report. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We we solved that. Yeah. Um, the make a motion to authorize the uh, cabling work totaling $2,313.98. Second. Uh, roll call, Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. Jesse? Aye. Okay. Second motion is going to be the authorization of the uh, purchase of the firewall. And related setup around the router and switches to the total of 1974 from Solve IT. Second. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Mary. Hi, Jesse. And then finally, a motion to authorize the, uh, the subscription based service of $440 a month from ISO. Solve IT, excuse me, keep doing that. Solve IT for the uh, remote support uh, and telephone based support. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Mary. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mike, Thank you. you. <laughs> uh, next is the addition of Jesse Hayford, Fulton Bank credit card and signature cards. Motion was made at the February workshop meeting to authorize us. Whenever Jesse has a chance to work out at home. We have to have a copy we of the minutes copy. first. Yes. We, yeah. have, we have the um whatever you have that I can hand to the meeting. You I think it can be tracked. I think she could be tracked. She'll accept it. Okay, so we need to that. Okay. Yeah. And if you want to email them to her, and I'll bring a hard copy also. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we know how our emails so yeah. <laughs> She did not start. She started in the yes. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to ask you, this. Did you get uh, put you on the supervisor distribution list. I used it a couple of times. Did you get those emails okay? Um, I, I didn't see okay. the, uh, oh, I just saw the emails. I'll, I'll send you a test later, but the okay. uh, so I, I have there's a supervisor for Marion TWP Burks. Yeah. Oh, you should be in. But I have a yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I took Jim off and I put Jesse on. Okay. So Anytime I, I email the office, okay, so that's what I use. So, and we just created a um, group. It's a distribution list. Yeah. It's a group yeah. in our email. So. Yeah. So, in, internally, that works for you guys. Yeah. But 
what, what I have set up is purely like Colin or Chuck or you can email something amongst ourselves to supervisors at Mary and DWP versus that comment if they're still Okay. So, uh, anyway, I'll send you a test email later to make sure you get it. Okay. Uh, pension plan contribution. The secretary worked the required uh, thousand hours for 2023. The contribution rate is 15% of the gross salary, which was $37,770. Calculated contribution amount for this is $5,666.10. I will make a motion to make the contribution to the secretary's pension plan of $5,666.10. Next is there was a uh, incident and a traffic citation that was issued um, during filing. Um, which unfortunately received a fine of $171.71 or 75 cents. Um, I, on a personal note, feel that this was a gross misapplication of that situation by the, the, the Penn State uh, Pennsylvania trooper that responded. But based on the fact that it would cost significantly more to fight this on principal reasons, um, we made a motion at the work dot to pay the the fine for us being as a result to implement some additional policies and safety procedures, as well as uh, place of signing on the back of vehicles, uh, instructing individuals to maintain a safe and minimum distance. Uh, pre and post trip checklists and reports, as well as accident report slips, would be generated to be kept with the trucks and in the shop. And uh, we're, we're going to look to try to put some NDOT and uh, other experiences that we have uh, regiments practice here for just general safety and, and improvement purposes. And Val had let us know that she has some materials that we're going to be reviewing and uh, see if we can apply them. Okay. Uh, Berks County Joint Zoning Commission, uh, we have to appoint three members to full-time on alternate. We made a motion at the workshop to appoint myself and Jesse as the primaries and Irene as the alternate which uh, we'll be using on April the 18th when they have their the next system is open. Uh, next item is the road crew to uh, attend flagger training. Um, we authorized Donald Height, David Stavi, Richard Troutman Jr. to attend this <laughs> training course on March 25th. The cost for this is $55 each for a total of $165. The course runs from 9 a.m. to noon. We'll be paying mileage and hourly wages uh, for three hours each as well. We made a motion at the workshop to approve all of that. Item 32 is the Marion Township Community Association Park Show. This is going to be held on May the 11th, 2024. Uh, we will be doing the usual road closure on Main Street and redirecting traffic. The motion was made at the February workshop meeting to approve this and follow the traffic flow as previously designed. Street sweeping will be held uh, on Wednesday, May 1st, with a rain date of Thursday, May 2nd. We made a motion at the workshop meeting to approve Main Street from Richmond Road to the bridge at Sheridan Road, Church Road, and Marion Drive from Main Street to 422. Water Street from Marion Township, uh, from the Marion Township building uh, on up, and the Township parking lot along with the engine and hot parking lot. Next item is the Conrad Weiser Youth Baseball. Uh, they've made a request to use the field again in 2024. Uh, they must supply a certificate of insurance, and a request uh, has been made as a contingent from the township for a court body to be present during that time. In the past, we did not charge them. We are not charging them again this year. Uh, we will need to do a little bit of prep on the field, which Butch has already gotten underway, and a motion was made at the township uh, meeting on Saturday to approve their request. Property maintenance issue is the next item for 660 Canal Road. This is owned by AT&T. Uh, Kraft has sent a demolition order for the shed back in August. AT&T is largely not responsive on this, but uh, as far as I know, there are still some attempts being made by Kraft to, to get in contact with somebody from AT&T. Well, no, he, they have, he has reached out and gotten no That's what I mean. They're, still making, they're making the attempt, but we've gotten nowhere. At some point, we're going to have the damn thing down. Okay, so, so that's the decision. Good. That is the next step. Yeah. You'll want to make a motion tonight to authorize the solicitation of folks and things for that job. So, if you scroll through your step by mid-final tax bill, they 
don't pay taxes as a utility. So can you lien a property to physical property? I mean, you could put a lien on it so that it's, uh, there's a, uh, a tie to it if it's ever sold, correct? That was correct. Well, so the property is technically owned by by a resident. Yeah, it's only made. I don't know so, if that's. I don't know if that's what the tax map blocks. Yes. Yeah, a lot of other parts of your. Okay. Uh, you, you, you have a tax. The township's position is that the property owner across the street owns the land containing this utility ship. Okay. So we don't want to do that to the property owner. I, I sent I sent a, a memo mm -hmm. to craft, but there are a couple of steps that need to be taken, right? You need to find out how much this work costs. You need to contract for it. You need to get the property owner's consent to enter the line. You probably need an administrative warrant to enter this specific property because there is some question about ownership and control. We want to, you want to, you want to be protected in both regards, right? We want the property owner's consent, but we also want the search warrant to cover us in the event that ATD ever claims that we weren't there properly. Okay. Only after that point can, so, can someone, can a contractor actually do that work. So the, the process has to be initiated. Um, now we'll say under the property maintenance code, it does specify that the township should be meeting this property to recover, recover its expenses. Mm -hmm. However, that language may be superseded um, by provision in the second climate, second class township code and may enable you to uh, potentially file a claim against ATT. Oh. Yeah, I don't want to do I, I looked it up. It is actually Brian P. Miller. Right. That, that's nice. I don't want to lean some person yeah. adverse right. property based on the fact that ATT is not keeping up on, on maintenance of their, their own buildings. Very interesting. Yeah. As it stands, the motion that we would need to make tonight would be to authorize you to solicit quotes for the demolition as well, well as prepare. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that work. Okay. Um, perhaps the township or SDE would, because we we need to know whether this work crosses the bid threshold. Okay. Yeah. I guess my question is: anybody contacted the property? He, he the property. Is he getting rent? I don't yeah, know. I, know. Yeah, I, I think he would. He didn't know you. I think he's apparently what she was kind of a call of reason or whatever. What he hired property owners ago. He didn't know there that it existed. I'm not sure he actually wants to do the work with his part of Okay. Okay, then not just it. But it, it, it is his land. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it'd be interesting if he's aware that he has a sort of lease agreement. Do you see it one of his previous lease agreements? It may be a previous not, not that anyone could locate it. Yeah, so nothing that cool. Yeah. So he couldn't find that at the courthouse? You know? The, the public records don't reflect any. Fully agreed, and it could have been a private agreement that it was never reported. I was involved with having chat on the net where they pay for that. that they get to keep it there, and every property owner down from there has to well, allow that. What, what, what's, what's common is that these utilities sign 30 or 40 year lease, they no longer they no longer need it, and they and then they ban then, abandon it. I mean, that happens with radio cap. <laughs> okay, so I guess we need to solicit quotes on demoing that yeah. property. Yeah. Yep. So, I, mean, it, it, yeah. I would say if you do believe this property owner is and should be the party ultimately responsible, you do have the ability to leave the property. 
See, I don't want to do that. Right. I think he has the unfortunate happenstance of buying the property and did not realize that was connected to his. his yeah. 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 I, I wouldn't, in good conscience, do that. I'd be. On the other hand, you know, the township sues ATT, whatever that be. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, 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 well so, so they're, they're, they have a, another angle that they have. They have corporate offices in Philadelphia and New Jersey. So that's where we've been trying, trying to send the notices of conduct that you can avail. Uh, if, the, if the amount of money costs $12,000, you would need to file cause of action in the court of common pleas, not district justice's office. If they don't dispute that, you end the default judgment, and then you'd have to execute on um, that judgment. But <laughs> yeah. what are, you gonna, are, you gonna, are you gonna are you gonna have a sheriff go into ATD's office and seize their property? No. Yes. <laughs> this, this printer is our account. Yeah. It's maybe like twenty by twenty, like fifteen by fifteen. It's it's not super big, but it's not yeah, it's a block. Yeah, center block. Yeah. And then you gotta haul away. It's like yeah. off the fence. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's good. It, it's like we're going to see the big. Yeah. Yeah. Does he want it removed? Would he want it as a sort? The, the, the no, 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 we don't need. Yeah, yeah. Did the property ever sign something to authorize the exemption? Well, that, that, well, we so we, 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 need, we, need his, we need his written consent to get on the property. But we all, but we also, I think, in this instance, want an administrative warrant from the court because of the exercise of control and possession issue with the shed and not knowing really who. Who we own? Yeah. The ones you get back in we can we can work on getting it. So you know, get them out. Yeah. Or you know, you always have a roadmaster out there with these are the Well, well, you, you got you got all. We're not going down all the road. Okay. Anyone get the bottom? Is the do we know? Do we know if the shed is connected with any roads? No idea. I assume it's connected. I hope there's not a body in there. Right. <laughs> I don't know. I know he asked me if he can get a ladder and climb up and see what's in it. And I said, "Well, I don't know." Well, that's not. Let me drop it. You think he has the right? What do you give John permission? Did he give John permission to look at the drum? Well, he could. Uh, Somebody I can call him master. Well, perhaps somebody well, should approach the property. Or no, we, we, we have, we have, we have, well, he's, he's a man, he's not, he's not the issue. Okay. If he asks for consent to inspect mm -hmm. and demolish, he will give it to us. He doesn't want to pay for it. Right. 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 Okay. Can so we, we get bills and it's AT&T? generate a bill. Yeah, yeah. That's five minutes of my time. Fifty-five cents. Send it out. We can try. I'll send it. I'll send one of you. The law officer is the township has fulfilled all its legal obligations legal obligations to demolish this building. It's about getting the contract, getting the Proper consent and right to enter, getting the warrant because we don't really know who exercises control of the building. Okay. Doing it and trying to obtain the reason. Okay. Okay. So, what happens first? We need, we need, we need a motion to solicit votes. With the raising of this utility check. <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion of what Colin just said. <laughs> and then and I'll second it. What would be the terms of the utility if you just get a demolition contractor in there? Well, I don't know. Well, I don't know. 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 I don't know
But presumably, if somebody can, can if both the four is to raise and remove right. all the material right. from the property. Right. I'm going to send them a bill. So send them a bill. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll be in the township more from Eugene. I'm going to take a look at this. I'm okay. just going to sense for what I think is okay. going to need to demolish it. Okay. And then maybe reaffirm that with the demolition contract mm -hmm. over an excavator or something. Maybe hire hire somebody like that just and see where we're at with value. Because if, it, if we're talking, say, 10000 because you got to tear it down and fall away. You know, we can get three quotes and then we can pursue. Correct. Right. Right. So there's another one. Okay. Okay. Peter. Aye. Larry. Aye. Jesse. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Technically, us, and then we have to go back to ATT. And that's the, the next layer. That's the magic. That's the magic. Yeah. 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 Constantly, yeah. constantly. You want to borrow a ladder? Look up in the roof. I have some. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me get your bot. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll pull out our camera. That's not the property. Let me talk about the ship. Do you know where it is? Yeah, I know where it is. That yellow yeah. down that. Yeah, it's been right. sitting there forever. Yeah, yeah. So if yeah, well, I have Butch and I are probably down there. I'm thinking maybe level thirty. All right. Well, Butch, you have my number, right? If you guys want a ladder, I have three sets of ladders. It would be interesting to just because there's a hole in the roof, is what I'm hearing. Yeah, yes. yeah, it's okay. So, you can't really get safe entry into it, but it'd be good to know if there's utility service. Yes, that's the cost because that's what's going to be added to cost. That's going to be considerably a lot more. Or, what kind of equipment is in there that? Uh, you could be a lot of switch gear. I don't know what, but it's it's, yeah. it's open. It's open. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, my, my first concern is we not get over that we take out everybody's phone service. But um, I, I, I would suspect, based on the size of the hole now, that it is not actively being used for service. Um, yeah, I mean, just saying, yeah, one yeah, I'd say that the center block wall is. You know, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not ours though. No. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. So it seems it's not going to be the uh, The county first department of emergency services, the EMC, is required by FEMA to attend 50% of the training's offer. First county has confirmed that. Our EMC John Solowski is current and up to date. And then the emergency management coordinator report. Uh, we had John here at the workshop meeting, and he would like to purchase some pop up cones. Received a uh, quote from Mainstream for two five packs of 20 inch, 28 inch pop up cones. They're $220 for each pack with a total of $440. Yeah, get there. Got to have <laughs> Also, a quote from Fire Safety USA for two five pack safety cones uh, at $299.95 each for a total cost of $652.85. Did I get that? two separate quotes for. I don't know. That's the way I read it. It was two, yeah. two, it was two quotes. One was for the pop up, one for the other. So we didn't add it up. So. I'll, I'll make a motion. I'm going to do it in one motion, two pieces. Mm -hmm. Um, to approve the purchase of two five packs of 28 inch pop up cones for a total of $440 and two five pack of foldable safety cones for $299.95 each or a total of $652.85. I'll second it. Motion carries. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Aye. Okay, that is the last item on the agenda. Um, I actually did not see the police report in the packet of things. Yeah, if you pass it down, I'll, I'll, I'll cover it. But um, otherwise, the only other thing I have is Butch. I noticed the uh, like the pedestrian crossing ballers on the street after the snowstorm. Are they somewhere here safe? Yeah, over in the shed. Okay. Can you get them put back up? I don't think we're not. After the snow, the hall. Okay. 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 Okay.
Thank you. The one, the one that's near my house. So can you say that's the FedEx guy? He hits it on purpose. Just drive right over. I don't, but this my neighbor across the street. Wendy just got one of those. Uh, okay. yeah. I was talking to my wife, like, so I'm probably, I'll totally get to that. Yeah. 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 What's that? I think those. That's uh, this is really I'll, I'll, I'll tell you guys a funny story after this. Yeah. are contract carriers. Yeah. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Maybe we'd be able to tell which truck it was based on timing and rad. But uh, anyway, the uh, police report for January, uh, largely eventful. Um, they had uh, 11 traffic stops, 10 citations issued, um, no parking tickets. Uh, four traffic accidents, so really not anything I used to the previous months. Um, because I think the only thing I had was the question around the, the pedestrian signage. Um, actually, actually, now that it jogs my memory, the, uh, the gas on Main Street. What was the... Didn't hear anything. What? There was that, the, mm -hmm. the, you know, like, there was that, the email that circulated around somebody, UGI, uh, suggested an immediate shut off or something like that. Right. Was that on. It's an unsafe, unsafe piece of equipment on the, the gear out of gas. Yeah, the corner of the, the corner house. Yeah, you're right there. My rock. Did UGI ever do anything with that? I don't know. So, yeah. I mean, oh, I don't know. So, oh. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, the, the red tag still on Main Street. Yeah, <laughs> the red tag uh, on the property, and it's, you must cease and desist using this this piece of equipment immediately. But like, uh, I don't know if that's actually going to stop somebody in the middle of winter if their heater is leaking gas. It's not quite fix it. But okay, so, yeah. okay. Can you, can you check in on that? Please. Can, can you and Val check into that? Yeah, down, Thank yeah. You. That, that, that may be a ground for discussion. Okay. Let's just read that. What was that? 30 something? Oh, so it was, it was 32. No. Is it 32? I think it was 36. It, it, might, be 36. it might be 36. Yeah. Maybe three. That was the beginning of the month. That, that email yeah. came through. And I, I asked, like, can we do anything about this? Like, beginning of what's that? Yeah, I think it's on this. Thank you. I think it's too personal. Let me have it. Let me look here. I've been up after it. You can look at it. I'm going to 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 look at it. It's probably 60 something then because, like, I, 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 I shut up or stuff. I had it. So I want to say you're probably right. It's probably 63. Yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. Wasn't it this? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Red tag. That's one thing. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. yeah. It's this one here. Is it's the one at the corner of Mary Drive Day. Sixty-one. And thank you. What? What? Sixty-one. This is concerned. Sixty-one Main Street. Okay. We need a motion to amend the agenda to include this. Okay. Come on. Okay. 61. Okay, we'll make, I'll make a motion and then the agenda to include 61 Main Street and the gas, the adverse gas condition. Under the guise that this is an emergency situation. Okay. Yes. And, yeah, look at this. Yeah. Township ought to take action authorizing any and all necessary step, step well, Authorizing yeah. any and all necessary steps to ensure that the gas leak. Does not continue. Okay, so we need to amend the agenda, and then we need to make a separate motion for that. Correct. Right? Okay, so a motion to amend the agenda to include the emergency action around Main Street. Who's making a motion? Me. Okay. Second. Okay. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Okay. Second motion is to authorize the solicitor, engineer, and craft to take any and all necessary actions to correct the uh, urgent situation around a, a gas leak. Sure, public safety, which, which may include but is not limited to contacting UGI and potentially pulling 
Yes, and well. then it's going to happen in town tomorrow. Yeah. Pulling an administrative search warrant, we confirm or deny whether the gas leak exists. Is the software in the measure? Yeah. Yes. What was the gas leak report? It was the beginning of the month. I want to say third or fourth. Yeah. yeah. It's one I asked you about. It was, it was February. February. Okay. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. 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 Yeah. I. Admittedly, I kind of thought UGI. It's just, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 But yeah. I want to. My hope is that it's been approved. Yeah, while while we will look at that tomorrow with UGI before we hear. So the, yeah. the agenda needs to be reposted on. Yeah. The... So yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Now we that. Um, that's all I have for public comment. I guess I'm uh, next. Officer Ludwig, thank you for coming out. Yeah. All right. Uh, Jesse, do you have any comments? Um, you skipped me. Let let uh, uh, see what we're down to. See, well, I think why a boss. That was all the other thing. Yes. Okay. So I mean, you get to go first. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Um, uh, we need to take up some petty cash. Um, how much do you guys need? One hundred, maybe. One hundred generally. Yeah, I don't think. Uh, maybe just a couple of dollars. So I'll off the notes. Yeah, I'll include that about I think we took out this 120 last time. I think our tools are oh, something like that. So that will be included with the checks. I'm gonna write it out to petty cash. Okay. So um then it'll be in the financials too. Then it's enough and probably a little bit more directed at Colin. Um we have a little bit of a dog issue. <laughs> I just like how they wrote so um, <laughs> um uh in, in on, on our strip um it's not in the in the um, on the sidewalk it's more on the property owner's property but the problem is the kids wait there for the school bus. is there anything we could do other than send them a polite letter saying please do we have, do we have an animal yeah we do we do that, if it's, that probably mandates that people clean up after animals but it's it a yard it's a good time they they're they're so they're so okay so we will send them a okay. like, we will send them a letter and the, the copy of the ordinance and ask them to turn their dog. And it's, 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 if, it does, if it doesn't cease and desist, the craft can cite that. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Just want to clarify that because it's the so first time we should send a letter. Yes, I'll I'll we'll work on that. Well, his found is really good. Craft. Well, craft today. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, that's yeah. Okay. Have, we, have we contacted these partners about this situation? No. Right now. no. If it's kids at the school bus, they're like, hey, there's all this poop here. So, here's what I think the letter could come from the township. Okay. So, but I would lightly advise them that if this conduct doesn't cease and desist, then the township will refer it to its code enforcement officer for issuance of citation. Yep. Thank you. Okay. It's a and, and, and since it's on the on the agenda, you might as well just make a motion authorize the, the senator. I'll make a motion to send a letter. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uncollected. Uncollected. Some of it's on the sidewalk and some of it's on, on their graphs. I'll second it. Roll call meter. Aye. 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 Jesse. Aye. Anything else, sir? No, that's it. Thank you. Yes, Jesse. Now, I don't have anything. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, real quick, and I forgot to mention. So the roadway projects, the paving, and trying to salvage you know, some of the existing pavement that's there. And you know, we're looking at in our cost of using what's called a pavement reinforcement fabric. Okay. So this goes down with oil first, and then we put overlay on top of it. Mm -hmm. it, it provides a lot, a lot of benefit for the cost. Mm -hmm. it, it's a little pricey, but it, it will prolong that pavement life. It also prevents that there's random cracking. Mm -hmm. This goes over. It helps to bridge that mm -hmm. so that that crack is going to come up through the new paper. Uh, and you know, cracks are an issue because it's not water to get down into the subgrade of the soil. The soil gets soft, and 
bushy and then it, it can't support the load and then, and then it, the pavement moves and it cracks and breaks out. Um, so I just had some samples here. Now, <clears throat> quite a range in cost, but this, this material here is what we use on a regular basis. Um, and that's what we were specifying. This is a real heavy duty. Some more components in this um, that it actually makes it stronger. So it has more tensile strength in it. Um, so I just wanted to mention that. I'm going to leave these here for the Roadmaster too for um, your reference. And, and so you're aware of it. Can you do it seconds, Charlie? I think one thing. I have some other things here. I'll put it on the pot. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. It, it, it's a way to prolong. So that anything yeah. you do to a broker lane, even where it's old pavement, um, it, it's going to prolong the life of that and, and save money. Well, if you pay a little more front, but now you have much more deeper, more structural things have to be in that. Just so you know, when you see it out there, when we're doing, you see a big roll of it, and we're rolling down the road before we pave. That's why. But you, 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 you recommend them. I don't want to know. Yeah, yeah. For the cost, we don't need we don't need the belt and suspenders with that more expensive. No, I, I have a drawer drawer at the bottom. Put this belt on there. Yeah, that's all. Oh, okay. uh, I No, just the two matters we should discuss during the okay. session. Okay. Uh, just to sit ready, the app is up, and um, if anybody needs help getting signed up, uh, let us know. We can play the up, and I'll let people know. I'll start spreading the word. Yeah, it's, it's on the website. Do you spend the time on it? It's like an important identification. So, uh, trash or not trash pickup. Um, <laughs> um, so, emergency clothes, flooding issues. We're going to post all that stuff on the Notification thing now, so sign up. I have signed up for it, it's very, very useful. So, if you haven't signed up for it, it's still good. Oh, I agree. Of course. Awesome. Sue, anything for you? No. Okay. Collins, yes. Can you get up? I'm sorry, Kelly. You just can't hear the recording. Question on uh, street sweeping. Yes. Did you say we're doing the engine house parking lot? Yes, we always do. Yeah, and the, we reason, don't call it. <laughs> the reason being is like, we're going to make the request again to use that for parking for the car show, for like handicap stuff. So this is a, a goodwill gesture on our part for sweeping it in hopes of building. Oh, we can't hear it. So the, the snow stuff becomes lighter, whereas the car show, yes, is, but it's it's less so we can take it. Yes, like it's smoke here. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Fill up with water. Okay. Thank you for the fire. Yeah. Yeah. Um, follow through the, the purposes of the procedure. Could we adjourn the meeting and then go to executive session or let all these five people leave to executive session and then adjourn? You can adjourn because no action needs to be taken on any of those matters. Okay. Thank you. So we are going to have an executive session immediately following the meeting tonight. I'll make a motion to adjourn. The time is now 9 39 p.m. Second. Your call, Peter. Aye. Mary. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Thank you, everybody. Second.